All right, hearth and homies, welcome to tonight's show. Tonight's compilation is Dick Tracy. This show would run from 1934 off and on until 1948. In 1934, a young Hyman Brown, who was still in college, secured the radio rights for this comic strip. On February 4th, 1935, it was picked up by CBS Radio, which aired four 15-minute episodes each week. In September of 1935, the show moved to the Mutual Broadcasting System. It's some of these episodes that we'll be hearing tonight. Like many shows that were geared towards kids in those days, this show had its own fan club. Comment down below if you were in that fan club or if you were in some other fan club back in the day. Join us tonight for the adventures of Dick Tracy, Tess Trueheart, Pat Patton, and Junior Tracy as they help fight crime. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Are you a detective? Yeah. And what do you need? Are you looking for a clue? I clue, Daddy. Uh, tell me. <laughs> I say, I'm a detective. <laughs> I'm a detective. And I'm looking for a clue. Clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, detective. Boys and girls, here's Dick Tracy. Detective Inspector Dick Tracy, protector of law and order. When the theft of a large order of industrial diamonds was discovered, Dick's only clue was an ordinary-looking lapel pin in the shape of two intertwined hearts. When noticing the same design and the tattoo on a dead man's shoulder, Dick soon learned through the Federal Bureau that the theft was the work of Nazi fifth columnists. And Tess Trueheart recognized the lapel pin as the badge of an apparently harmless social club about which she once wrote a feature article. She agreed with Dick that the club was probably a false front for Nazi activity. But when Dick had verified this, he learned that Tess had disappeared. Actually, she's the unwilling guest of the Nazi ringleader, Brinker von Ludwig. But Dick doesn't know that. While he frantically searches for Tess, von Ludwig and his hatchet-faced female assistant, Hedwig, are huddled over a secret shredway's room. Hey, Pointer, is that not our ship? Mine, Hedwig. It's a long wavelength. You should let Dolman do this. He is a radio expert. It's also extremely curious. I can manage. Yeah, Bull. But the less we use this radio, the better. Wait, I think... No. No, it's just a routine weather report. Suppose something has happened to the ship. Now, what could happen to it, Hedrick? Suppose the Atlantic Patrol has challenged it. Suppose they learn it is not a Swedish merchantman. Suppose... Why do you always imagine the worst? Because in this way, one is prepared for the worst. I believe we've already prepared for that. The ship's papers will be in perfect order. Forged, of course, but the Americanish will not suspect that. Do not underrate the Americans, Brinker. Ah, they make progress for an inch and cork like they've traveled a mile. But they have listening posts. If they intercept their ship's message to you... Let them, let them. The message will be harmless enough. Meaningless, in fact. I, no, I wish there was some other way of getting those diamonds back to Germany. This is the best way, I tell you. You say that because it is your way. And may I ask, Pauline, what is the matter with my way? Matter with it? Do you think Gundel will go to prison for a forgery he did not commit? Gundel is a dumbkoff. He'll never commit the theft of the diamonds with his membership in our club. You are so sure of everything, aren't you? What about this Dick Tracy? Will he not connect it? Let him. I have a sure way of dealing with Inspector Dick Tracy. Mm, you mean the girl in there, that reporter? <laughs> Miss Trueheart, yes. Once he knows the safety depends on it, he will be reasonable, don't worry. He said Fritz Hoffman would be reasonable. Well, how did I know Fritz would be a greedy pig? Imagine demanding a thousand dollars merely for acquiring diamonds with that forged receipt. And they threatened me. Imagine. Uh, it's very fair not to when I remember what happened to Fritz. Well, see that you do remember it. See that the same thing doesn't happen to you, Hedrick. Huh? They will never find me floating in the river. You need me too much. Mm. And stop questioning my judgment, please. I only question keeping the girl here. What else am I to do with her? You got rid of Fritz Hoffman. You mean to... No, no, Hedrick. 
The girl is caused trouble, Drinker. Well, how can she locked up in there? She is clever. And so is her friend, Dick Tracy. And so am I. Mm, if you were really clever, you would take your chances with her. The river is nearby? No, or... no, no, I tell you. As long as we do her no harm, Tracy's hands will be tied. But suppose someone made a mistake. Suppose something did happen to her. Accidentally, of course. Meaning you? I am not infallible like you. I am up to make a mistake any time. Cedric, if anything happens to Miss Truhart, I will hold you personally responsible. Oh, I do not mind. I will be responsible. You will be turned over to the American police on a charge of murder. And, a... <laughs> and suppose I should tell them everything. No. No, you would never do that. You are too good a Nazi. Yes, but I could. The girl is younger than you, prettier than you. You are jealous, Cedric, eh? See that you give me no cause to be jealous, Frank. <laughs> ah, you know that I do. What is all that? Quiet. Quiet, I think this is our man. How can you make any sense? Listen, Mrs. Octavio, I... Get a pencil, Mrs. Right by your hand. Oh, oh yes. Well, are you sure? Positive. What did they say? Here. Rather heavy... Expect reports early. Rather heavy, but, but it means nothing, Brinker. You think so, eh? <laughs> Good. Now I will apply. This is crazy, I tell you. All you said was clouds indicated towards you. Patience, patience. You will see all right. They're yeah, answering. Will you be quiet? Will, head, east, now. So, put that. All yeah, right, we down to Eric. I got it, but it makes no sense. It is not supposed to. I think I have a reply here. I have it, Brinker. Have overlooked rest. Yes. Now, four more words and we sign off. Mm -hmm. Good enough. Everything exactly as I planned it. Brinker, you must either explain to me or provide me with a straight jacket. Oh, poor Hedrick. It is so simple when one knows. Simple? Their first message said, Weather heavy, expect report early. You replied, clouds indicate towards you. And then they said, we'll head east now. Yes, it is crazy. <laughs> oh, no. You simply take the first letter of every word. The words themselves mean nothing. Only the first letters. Oh, I see. Then weather heavy, expect reports early means W-H-E-R-E. -E. Where? Exactly. And my reply, clouds indicate it towards you. C-I-T-Y. City. What's the next one? They said, Bill Head East now. W-H-E-N. You see? Where? City. When? All right. You said, no obstacles are north. N-O-O. Noon. Then you said, have overlooked west. H-O-W. How? And my last message told them. Weather abating in time. W-A-I-T. Now, you see how simple it is? You read their messages, and I'll give you my answer. All right, there. City. Then. Noon. How? Wait. Mm. Very clever of you, Brinker. And the beauty of it is, it sounds so harmless to anyone else. I will send Felix in a speedboat to fetch the ship's captain at noon tomorrow. And when he comes? I will deliver the diamonds, and we will celebrate the handsome profit. So, what do you think of my way now, eh? Mm, I will show you at the dance tonight. You haven't forgotten the annual, I hope. Uh, don't worry. You know... I think this social club has just about served its purpose, Hedrick. After tonight's dance, I think we will disband it. I find that lately it is more of a hindrance than a help. And especially with Gundla, I think it would be better if we simply dropped out of the side. Now, Junior, you were the last person to see Ted before she disappeared. He was, Dick. I did my darnest to find out what was on her mind. Because you know women. Yeah, sometimes I wonder. She didn't say a thing, huh? No, yeah, she was flying all over the place getting her suitcase packed. Did you help her do that? Yeah, I saw him. What'd she pack? 
Oh, the usual junk girls travel with lipstick. Oh, uh, what clothes, I mean? Well, she was wearing... I know what she was wearing. I talked to her in her office. What did she pack? Well, she took that blue thing. You know, the one with all that lacy stuff An on it. An evening dress, you mean? Oh, if that's what you call it. The one she wore when you took her to the United Nations ball. Well, go on. She took an evening gown. Yeah. And oh, sure, the satin slippers that go with it. Mm -hmm. Did she say anything about that uh, lapel pin, the two hearts? Gee, Dick, I don't think so. All she kept saying was, boy, what a break. What a story. What a break. Yeah, when I talked to her earlier, she showed me the article she wrote about this phony social club. Then she comes home and packs a party dress and... Why, sure, that's got to be it. No way. Let me get out that phone. Now, you've gone haywire. <clears throat> Not me, Junior. Cass was heading for that club. They're holding their annual dance tonight, and that's why she took a party dress. Why, it's got to be. Hello? Uh, excuse me. How about... What time is the dance tonight, Fräulein? It will begin, begin at 10 o'clock. Uh, Dankeschön. Thank you. Should I wear my tuxedo, please? If you expect to get in, you had better. Jawohl, Fräulein. Gee, Dick, I didn't know you could spout German. Yeah, don't look now, Junior, but I can. Now, let's see. By the time I could hold a pat pat and get home and change into my tuxedo... Oh, is she going to wear a monkey suit? I've got to, Junior. And pat, too? Well, sure. They won't let us into the dance without them. Boy, I'd like to be there to see that. I'm just so tested there to see it is all I care about. Boy, oh, boy, the thing the cop has to go through. You're not kidding, Junior. You're at least getting dressed up to meet Tess. The poor Pat hasn't even got a date. No, you're wrong. Pat's got the same date I have. You mean with Tess? Nope. The two of us have a very heavy date, Junior, with a killer. Now hand me that phone again so I can call Pat and break the news to him. I am worried, Brinker. What? Again? Now, what is it? This dance tonight. It's open to the Ken Republic. Of course. What are it? The Ken Republic might include the crazy. Let him come. He's looking for Miss Trueheart. He won't find her. But he'll find a great deal more than he is looking for. If he thinks he knows what trouble is now, wait until he crosses my... Detective Inspector Dick Tracy will be back tomorrow, same time, same station... With more exciting adventures, be sure to listen. This is Don Gardner speaking. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. <laughs> The makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. And there go the big guns, reminding us all that puffed wheat and puffed rice actually are shot from guns right in the Quaker plant. Nourishing grains of sun-ripened wheat and rice are loaded into the guns, and then they're exploded to eight times their normal size. That's what makes puffed wheat and puffed rice so specially easy to digest, so that you get their trigger-fast food energy much more quickly and easily. And that's important if you want to think fast and act fast like Dick Tracy does. And if you're a loyal Dick Tracy fan and friend, check up on the pantry at least twice a week to make sure there's always some puffed wheat or puffed rice there. Look to see at the end of today's program. And if there isn't one of those famous red and blue packages in the pantry now, ask Mother to order some from the grocer's. Be sure to be glad when you remind her of something so specially good for breakfast. And then you and mother and dad can join the thousands of happy families who enjoy Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice every day. And be sure you have your pencil and paper ready for today's secret messages. Get them now. When Dick Tracy closed the case involving the Baron and the substratosphere airplane plans, he paid a visit to Scotland Yard, and here the great detective found a new mystery. Dryden Small, the well-known Egyptologist, was returning to America with certain treasures which he had discovered in the ancient tomb of Tuctamino. Small had reason to believe that someone was trying to kill him, and Tracy was asked to protect him on the voyage to America. Sitting in Small's cabin the first night out, Dick and Pat were startled to see a strange face peering in at their window. Mr. Tracy! What's the matter, Small? What's wrong? Look, there at the window. The man with the yellow face. So what? Dick, great Scott, look. That awful face at the window gone now. Come on, Pat. We've got to find out who it is. Yes, and why are we standing through that window? Oh, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. We'll be back in a moment. Here, through this door, Pat. That'll bring us out on deck. Uh, 
I don't see anyone. No, neither do I. We'd probably waste our time if we tried to find out who it was now. It's got too much of a head start, and it's too dark to recognize anyone. Come on, we might as well get back to the cabin. There are a few questions I want to ask Dryden Small. You know, Dick, there's something about that tomb digger robot that I don't like. We're here to protect him, not to make a friend of him, Pat. What I want to know is why he was so secretive. He hasn't told us the whole story by any means, Pat. What's your theory, Dick? What do you think he's trying to conceal? Well, I'm I'm not sure. But I think perhaps he stole something from Tutankhamun's tomb, something which might be considered very sacred. And those who consider it so are trying to get it back. That's only a wild guess. Well, it doesn't so, it sound so wild to me. Well, Mr. Small, we couldn't find a trace of your friend with the yellow face. Mr. Tracy, I must say I'm surprised. You promised me protection and then you run off and leave me alone. Why, I, I might have been murdered. Oh, nonsense. We were nearby and nothing could have happened to you. I wish you wouldn't treat this so lightly. You may not realize it, Mr. Tracy, but I'm in very serious danger. I don't treat any of my obligations lightly, Mr. Small. I tell you, the people who are after me are very clever. Not only that, but they have at their command all the forces of evil and black magic. Oh, so it's black magic now, yes. is it? Yes, black magic and worse, perhaps. A curse has been set on me. I know it. I feel it. I'll never escape from it. Never. Small, precisely what are you taking back to the States with you? Oh, not a great deal. Some ancient pots and utensils used by the pharaohs, a fragment of the great seal, and also the mummy of Tutankhamun's second son. The mummy is stored in the hull of a ship, isn't it? Yes, yes. And uh, what else are you bringing back with you? I, nothing, nothing but those things I told you about. Are you sure of that? You don't believe me, do you? To put it bluntly and briefly, no. You think I'm holding back something from you, eh? Well, I'm not. I'm not, you hear? I've told you everything, everything. I don't know why they want to get me any more than, than you do. But I know they're after me, and you've got to help me. I'm not so sure of that. I'm not so sure that I'm not going to rid myself completely of all responsibility in this case. What? What do you mean? I'll take the trouble to explain for the last time. When you go to a detective and ask his protection, you've got to tell that detective just what you're afraid of and what he's got to protect you against. Now, Mr. Small, don't withhold any information from me. Because in this case, too, it may mean the difference between life and death. I, I've told you everything. I, I swear it. Who is the man in the yellow, the yellow face? I don't know. I don't know any more about him than you do. From the way you spoke of him, you've seen him before. The man with the yellow face, you said. Do you know him, Small? Have you seen him before? Yes. Uh, yes, I have. You were right all the time, Dick. He was holding something back. Where did you see him before? Several times in Cairo. Once in London. I don't understand it. I'm not sure I know how to explain it. But it seems I saw him every time I received one of those scarabs. Those scarabs which mean death and destruction for those who receive them. And the only time I saw him in London was at the theater. The usher handed me a program as I came in. And when I opened it, there, folded in between its leaves, was one of the scarabs. At that very moment, I, I happened to look up at the boxes. And looking down at me was the man with the yellow face. What else do you know of the man with the yellow face? Well, that's all. I don't believe you, Mr. Small. You know who he is, and you know what he wants. I tell you... Now, let me warn you once again. If anything happens to you, you'll have only yourself to blame. Because when you had the chance, you wouldn't tell us everything you know. And now, shall we go down to dinner? Coffee, sir? Oh, yes, please. By the way, Small, do you still carry that pearl-handled pistol? Yes, and I shall never part with it. If you ask me, it's much too dainty to be any good. I'm afraid it isn't very much to depend on. This pearl-handled revolver has been with me a long time, Mr. Tracy. I intend to hold on to it. Oh, oh. Hello. The lights have gone out. Dynamo must have failed or something. Certainly pitch black in here. Mr. Tracy! Tracy! In the name of heaven! Small! Small, where are you? He's struggling with someone. Help, Tracy! Help! I can get my hands on whoever it is that... Ah, got him. Give me a hand here, Pat. It's so dark, can't see a thing. I've got hold of someone. Well, can't see who it is. There go the lights. They're on again. Oh. oh. Why, why, I was holding you all the well, time. Who do you think you were holding? Well, all I could do in the dark was to reach out and grab. I, my throat, it, it hurts. Someone tried to choke me. Yes, yes, there are marks in your throat, all right. Well, grabbing hold of me did one thing anyway. It scared him off. Yes, yes, Small. This time he was scared off. I wonder if I'll always get to you in time. I can't protect you from something that's nameless, you know. Something you won't tell us about. I've told you everything. Now, look here, Small. 
Tonight, you are an example of what might happen. And apparently, you are still unconvinced that telling me everything you know is the only sensible thing to do. Now, for the last time, will you talk up? Well, how about it? I... I've told you the whole truth. Very well. I've done my duty. I've warned you. Hiya, Dick. Oh, hello, Pat. Where have you been? Walking by on deck? Yeah. Isn't it a beautiful night? Yes, I suppose it is. Yeah, I met a girl strolling about on deck. Uh, Miss Forster, her name is. Oh, boy, what a girl. She swell platinum hair and... Uh, Shay, Shay, what's the matter with you? Huh? Oh, nothing, nothing. You got something on your mind? Yes, yes, Pat. And his name is Dryden Small. Where is our friend Small? Or should I say our small friend? In there. Asleep? Reading in bed, I think. Pat, I'm more than ever convinced that he's keeping something from us. Hey, Dick, maybe the guy's on the level. Maybe we're just imagining things. Maybe someone is trying to get hold of some of the things he took from Tarankamal's tomb. Small says they're very valuable. They're valuable, all right. And that's one part of his story, I believe. But whatever the man with the yellow face is after, there's more than just a few trinkets taken from Tarankamal's tomb. Well, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about it. Our job is to see that Dryden Small reaches America safely. Once he puts foot on American soil, our job is done. No, Pat. I'm afraid it isn't as simple as all that. Oh, why do you say that, Dick? I've been telling Dryden Small that unless he tells me everything, I'm going to give up all responsibility for his safety. Of course, I'm not going to do that. Either while he's on this boat or after he lands. But if he doesn't cooperate, why should you bother with him? I've got to stay with Dryden Small until I'm sure that he's out of harm's way. We've had to protect uncooperative people before. You know, Dick, there's something about this whole business that gives me the creeps. Oh, it's not as bad as all that, Pat. When we were chasing Max Gold or the Baron, we had something we could get our hands on. But what have we got here? Nothing but a face seen at the window. A figure that strikes in the dark. Yeah, Dick, I don't like it. Well, I'm not exactly delighted myself, Pat. But we policemen have to learn one thing. Not to turn away when there's an unpleasant job to do. Doing the things we like to do is simple. Doing the things we don't like to do that proves whether or not we're men capable of holding down a man-sized job. Mm, I guess you're right as usual. And I'm glad you jacked me up. Oh, uh, look, Dick. It's uh, my turn to sit up with Small tonight, but uh, I was thinking that maybe... Yes, well, Pat? Well, you know, the girl I met on deck, Miss uh -huh. Forster, I said I'd meet her in the ballroom for a few dances at 10.30, and, <laughs> well, I sort of wondered... If... All right, Pat. <laughs> Go ahead. How will you get back? Ah, uh, thanks, Dick. I won't be very late. That's <clears throat> crazy. Uh, what is it, Small? Come into my bedroom one moment. There's something I want to show you. What's the matter with you, man? Hey, come, come. He sure looks funny to me, Dick. All right, come along, Pat. In here. Look. The wall above my bed. Holy mackerel, Dick. Look. Someone's writing a message on the wall. Look, it's being written right before our eyes. You see it, too? I thought I was going crazy. It's an invisible hand writing something on the wall. I can't escape it, and you can't help me. This thing is too big for us. It's too powerful. Oh, the saints preserve no, 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 take it easy, you two. Let's see what the invisible hand is writing. There, there, it's evidently finished. Yes. Uh, look what it has written. Your hour is at hand. Your end is near. The black pearl of Osiris must shine again. Yes, yes. And look, there on the floor, it's another scarab, Tracy. Another scarab. What is the meaning of the strange message on the wall? And how is it written? It's a puzzler, all right. But now it's time for the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol Meeting. The makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the specially delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, invite you to attend. The 19th meeting will now come to order, and today the members of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol congratulate the Boy Scouts of America on their 28th anniversary. Let's all stand at attention, patrol members, as a tribute to that great boys' organization. Boy Scouts of America, we salute you. Fine, Junior. And now, patrol members, have you got a pencil and paper ready for the special secret code message? All right, Junior, let's have the message. Here it is. Prisoner... 25 9 3 20 11. 26 
21, 8, 17, 16, 20, 8, 16, 3. 8, 18, 15, 4. Did you get it? I'll repeat it again just to make sure. Ready? It's prisoner 25, 9, 3, 20, 11. 26, 21, 18. 17, 16, 20, 8, 16, 3. 8, 18, 15, 4. Now you can decode that secret message with your Dick Tracy secret code book. And remember what it says, patrol members, it's important. You know, Dick Tracy wants you to be as good as he is at decoding messages. So we're sending you a secret message every day this week. Be sure you have your code book, a pencil and some paper handy every day when you tune in on Dick Tracy. And listen, if you don't have a code book, join the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol now so you won't miss all the swell secret detective activities and good times. Now here's all you do to get your secret code book, your patrol pledge, and special badge. Just tear the tops off two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or one of each. Be sure it's the top panel that says, Three Wrappings Guard It's Christmas. Then mail the two box tops with your name and address to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. And you have the time of your life in the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. So ask Mother to get you some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. Remember, they're the two delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns to give you trigger-fast food energy. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. Makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the two tempting, delicious, nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. Big guns, hear them? Well, the next time you have a big dish of crisp, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice for breakfast, remember the sound of the big guns, because those two delicious cereals are actually shot from guns. Sun-ripened grains of nourishing wheat and rice are loaded into the guns, and then these little kernels of grain are exploded to eight times their normal size. That makes them look different and taste better than ordinary cereals. That special Quaker process makes puffed wheat and puffed rice specially easy to digest so that you get trigger-fast food energy more quickly and easily. And you need lots of quick food energy if you want to be as fast on your feet as your friend Dick Tracy is. And here's a good idea. Puffed wheat and puffed rice are two different delicious flavors. So ask Mother to get a package of each at the grocer's. And then you and Mother and Dad can have Quaker puffed wheat for breakfast one morning and Quaker puffed rice the next. That really gives you variety, doesn't it? So look in the pantry today to see if one of those famous red and blue packages is there now. If it's Quaker puffed wheat, ask Mother to get a package of Quaker puffed rice. And if it's Quaker puffed rice, ask her to get some Quaker puffed wheat. And then you have both for a delightful change that thousands of wide-awake boys, girls, and grown-ups enjoy every day. And remember, fellows and girls, there's another secret code message at the end of the program today. So be sure you have your pencil, paper, and code book ready. Dick Tracy has been trying to protect Dryden Small, a well-known Egyptologist from dark forces which seek his death. Small has received strange warnings, and several times his life has been attempted unsuccessfully due to the daring efforts of Dick Tracy. Both Dick and Pat are convinced that Small has kept from them the real reason for these mysterious attacks. In our last episode, we heard how a strange message, seemingly written by an invisible hand, had appeared on the wall above Small's bed.
Let's see what the invisible hand is writing. Your hour's at hand. Your end is near. The black pearl of Osiris must shine again. Yes, yes, and look there on the floor. It's another scarab, Tracy, another scarab. Yes, so I see. Another symbol of death and destruction. Why don't you do something? But it's no use. You can't fight the supernatural. They told me there was a curse upon the tomb of Tutankhamun. I should never have gone into it. All the others who have been in it have come to sudden death. Oh, stop it. Stop it, Small. There's nothing supernatural here. I know, but Dick, the writing on the wall, we saw the message being written. Yes, sir. And now look, it's beginning to fade. Ghost writing, that's what it is. The handwriting of a ghost. Oh, come, come, Small. Pull yourself together. This isn't the work of a ghost. The man with a yellow face, whoever he may be, paid a visit to this cabin in our absence. How do you know he was here? Why, it's simple enough. The scarab on the floor, he left it there. The handwriting on the wall, he put it there. No, no, no. He might have put the scarab there, but the handwriting, that couldn't have been done by anybody human. We saw the message being written and there was no one here. Of course there wasn't. The message was written before we got here. We saw it when we turned on the bed lamp. I don't get it, Dick. Pat, put your hand over that lamp, about six inches away. All right. I've got it there now. What do you feel? Mm, nothing but heat. Ah, precisely, heat. The heat from the lamp. Do you recall ever having used heat in connection with invisible messages before, Pat? Oh, why, sure. Say, I get it. This message was written in invisible ink and couldn't be seen until the heat of the lamp brought it out on the wall. Go to the head of the class, Pat. That's exactly what happened here. The man with a yellow face wrote his message in invisible ink. Small came in, turned on the lamp, and in half an hour or so, the heat from the lamp brought the message out. There's your supernatural for you, Mr. Small. <laughs> You you make it sound simple. It is simple. The rest of this case were as simple as that handwriting. We'd have no problem. But but it's not simple, Small, because you choose to make it difficult. I choose to make it difficult? Yes. You refuse to tell us all you know about this. You refuse to tell us what we've got to know if we're to protect you against the man with the yellow face. There's a definite reason why you're being followed. There's a definite reason for these attempts on your life, such as the one in the dining salon tonight. There's some reason for these scarabs and that message on the wall. Now, what is it? I'm sorry, but I don't know any more than I've told you. And I've told you once, and I'll tell you again, that you're not being entirely truthful. Now, look here. I want you to tell me the meaning of that message about the Black Pearl of Osiris. Yeah, that was a queer one. What is the Black per Pearl of Osiris anyway, Dick? I don't know about the Black Pearl, Pat. I do know, however, that Osiris was a god worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. And that even today, there are certain secret societies which still worship him. Hmm. Your knowledge of Egyptian history is remarkable, Tracy. Well, unfortunately, I don't know quite enough. But you know what I want to know, Small. What is the Black Pearl of Osiris? I demand an answer. I, I don't know, Tracy. I swear it. If I knew, don't you think I'd tell you? I, I, I feel rather faint. I, I wonder if one of you would mind going up on deck with me. Just for a little while. Well, uh, I, I had a date with her. All right, Pat. You'll have to forget your date. I've got to see the captain at once. You'll have to stay with Small. Keep close to him on deck and don't let him out of your sight. Okay. I hope I get a chance to explain to that girl that I didn't mean to disappoint her. You feel better now, Small? Yes. Yes, Mr. Patton. The air is doing me good. Looks like we're going to have a fog. You can see wisps of it floating past the binnacle light up there. Yes. You know, Small, you really ought to come clean with Tracy. Patton. Yeah? That, that man leaning against the rail. Uh, he, he just looked this way, and his face... Well, what about his face? I, I'm not sure, but it, it looked yellow. It, it, it... Now, take it easy. Don't start getting jittery. Don't be, begin seeing a yellow face in every passenger on this ship. Look, look. He, he's moving away from the rail. He's disappearing into the fog. Oh, what was that? Something dropped at our feet. Yeah, I heard it. Let me see. Hey, hey here it is. What? Why, say, it looks it looks like a scarab. A scarab? A pattern. It, it's another warning. That was the man with the yellow face. Yeah, we'd better get down and get to your cabin. I'll get in touch with Tracy. No, 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 no. Not back to the cabin. I'm afraid to go there. Let's stay in the open. Okay, okay, but i better get Tracy here as quick as I can. Come on over by the light. What are you going to do? Well, Dick's in the captain's cabin. I'm going to send him a message. A message in code. Well, 
Come in, Mr. Tracy. Glad to see you. All right, Captain. Mm, worried, Tracy. Very much worried. I'm glad you're here. I don't like the things that have been happening on this ship of mine. Well, I'm sorry about the need for searching the ship, but you must understand, Captain, that at any moment, one of your passengers may be, well, put out of the way. Mm, that isn't what I referred to, Tracy. There are other things that are wrong. Such as? Well, have you heard about what's been going on down in the hold? The hold? Mm-hmm. I know. What's happened down there? One of the crew, a fellow named Weeks, was found about an hour ago, totally unconscious. Unconscious? Yes, lying in the door of the storage room. Not a strong fellow. As a matter of fact, he has a weak heart. That's why we have him down there. All he does is check the books and little odd jobs like that, you know. Yes, yes, but what made him unconscious? Well, according to his story, Tracy, as he was approaching the storage room, he noticed the door was open, which was unusual. As he began to investigate, he suddenly saw, standing in the doorway itself, a strange-looking figure. The next thing he remembers, he was lying on a cot. The ship's doctor was working over him. Huh. He's not given to seeing things, is he? No, I don't think so. He's a stable, dependable fellow. At any rate, he's never seen things before. Well, in that case, I don't think it'd be a bad idea to investigate that storage room. Now, about the search for the man with the yellow face, Captain. Yes, I wanted to talk to you about that, Tracy. We, we don't seem to be making much progress. Matter of fact, Tracy, we're not making any progress at all. Yes, yes, I was afraid of that. Oh, excuse me. Come in. There's a message for Mr. Tracy, sir. Oh, give it here. Where did you get this? It was given to me by a gentleman down in Deque, sir. Thank you. Excuse me, Captain. Yes, certainly. It's a code message from Pat. Hmm? Prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16, 7, 10, 18, 22... Uh, will you excuse me, Captain? I've got to join Mr. Patton on deck immediately. Uh, nothing wrong, is there, Tracy? I don't know. That's what I, I want to find out. And I've got to find out fast. Well, I'll go along with you, Tracy. I've got to go up to the bridge, and this will be on my way. Glad to have your company, Captain, but let's hurry. Uh, we can take this companionway here, Tracy. It leads down to deck A. Fine. Deck A. I don't see Mr. Patton, do you? No, but this fog is getting thicker. Mm -hmm. He may be down at the other end. Come on. Well, I'll leave you here, Tracy. Man overboard! Man overboard! Man overboard, Tracy. Get down there as fast as you can. I'll see to ordering the boats over the side. Right. Man overboard! Man overboard! Hey, hey, you there. Where is he? Get out of the way. 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 Get out Patton's horse with him. Yes, yes. What happened? Overboard. Patton, uh, Patton was thrown overboard. What? Pat overboard? Wait, Tracy, what are you doing? Why are you taking off your coat? Why do you think? I'm going after Pat. Stop! Don't! Another man overboard! Another man! Tracy, they'll both be found! Patton and Tracy, too! 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 Will Dick save Pat? Or has the detective's friend been swallowed up by the black waters in the night? Dick will save him if anyone can. But now the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two popular, delicious, quick energy-giving cereals that are shot from guns, invite you to attend another meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. Here comes Dick Tracy Jr. now. The 20th meeting will now come to order, patrol members. And let's be sure we all have pencils and paper ready to take down today's secret code message. Are you going to give Dick Tracy's friends the message that Pat sent Dick today, or have you a special secret patrol message, Junior? Oh, well, both, Mr. Quaker Man. First, I'm going to repeat the message that Pat sent to Dick Tracy. Good. Are you ready, patrol members? Here it is. Prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16. 7, 10, 18, 20, 2. Once more, Junior, to make sure everyone got it. All right, Mr. Quaker Man. It's prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16, 7, 10, 18, 20, 2. Fine. And now what's the special patrol message, Junior? Here it is. Are you all ready? It's Buffalo. 21, 12, 14, 10, 12, 4. 10, 20, 13, 3, 6, 10, 20, 13, 3, 21. 1, 8, 14, 
five. Better repeat that one, too, Junior, I think. Okay. Ready, everyone? It's Buffalo. 21, 12, 14, 10, 12, 4. 10, 20, 13, 3. 6, 10, 20, 13, 3, 21. 1, 8, 14, 5. Well, that sounds very important, Junior. It is. It's a special order for patrol members. But how about the fellows and girls who aren't members and can't decode the messages? Well, we can't very well give away the patrol secret. Of course not. I can't imagine any real wide-awake boy or girl not joining, can you? Not unless they don't know how to join on the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. So maybe you better tell them, just in case there are some fellows and girls listening in for the first time. Good idea. Well, here's how you can join the patrol and get the secret code, the patrol pledge, and the membership badge so you don't miss any of the fun. Just tear the tops off two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or one of each. Put them in an envelope with your name and address printed on a plain piece of paper and mail them to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Then you get in on all the secret detective activities, too. And Dick Tracy sends you a secret code book, a patrol pledge, and a special badge, all free. Tell Mother how those nourishing, delicious cereals are shot from guns to make them specially easy to digest. So ask her to get you some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, those two tasty nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy adventure. There's the sound of the big guns in the Quaker plant, where they're making puffed wheat and puffed rice for the thousands of happy families who enjoy something specially good for breakfast every day. You know, breakfast is a very important meal. It follows the longest stretch between meals and comes just before you start your active day. That calls for lots of real food energy, and that in turn calls for nourishing puffed wheat and puffed rice. That's why they're shot from guns. A special Quaker process explodes each grain of wheat and rice to eight times its normal size. The tiny, hard-to-digest food cells are unlocked for you so that you can use their trigger-fast food energy easily and quickly. So have Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice for breakfast often. Try them turn about. Puffed wheat one day, puffed rice the next. You know, there's a good idea for you to tell Mother about. She's always trying to give you and Dad something different that you really enjoy and that's specially good for you, too. Well, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, you have two delicious flavors for a taste variety that the whole family goes for. So tell Mother about it and ask her to get some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. And then you can change flavors every day and still be getting the trigger-fast food energy you need to be as quick in thought and action as Dick Tracy is. And remember, patrol members, there's another secret code message for you at the end of today's program. So be sure you have your pencil, paper, and secret code book ready. An unknown assailant called the man with the yellow face has threatened the life of the well-known Egyptologist, Dryden Small. Yesterday, we heard how Dick had received a code message from Pat, who was walking on Deck A with Dryden Small. As Dick and the ship's captain hurried to Deck A, someone cried, Man overboard! It seems Pat, fighting hand-to-hand with the man with the yellow face, had been thrown overboard. The brave and courageous detective leaped over the side after his friend. Will he save him, or will he too meet death in the black waters of the ocean? 
Did my boat fall on the side? I might say, they should fall. They should fall. The message is just winning enough to pass. Hey, what? Come along, man. We've got to get that lifeboat over the side at once. Here you go, no, sir. Good, good. Come along. Come along. Anything about this? Did he keep a level at your oil? Watch the men, Motley. There are two men overboard. Bring them back. Cover those slugs far enough. And the old men. Good luck, men. Good luck. You've got to bring them back. Thank goodness they're keeping their searchlights going. Right, sir. I don't see... Hold on, sir. They're serving to port. Two points to the port bow, sir. This way! Help! Help! That's Tracy and Patton. Pull out, men. Right, sir. Side of them. Give away there. Eve, I Steve. Uh, stand by on the bow, bosun. They help them board. Aye, aye, sir. Oars. Yeah. All right, Mr. Tracy. We've got you, sir. We've got you. Take Patton. He's out. Right, sir, right. Pull him in, boys. Pull him in. Uh, now, lend him a hand. There we are. Uh, all right, you next, Mr. Tracy. Grab hold, sir. Grab hold. Yeah. Uh, Easy. Uh, up to come, sir. Up to come. Over. Uh, thanks. There we are. Uh, well, that water's cold. How's Pat? Uh, he'll be all right, Tracy. He's suffering from cold and shock, most likely. But we'll get him back to the ship at once. And pull away together. Stroke. 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 Well, Dick... I guess I owe my life to you once again. Someone else would have pulled you out if I hadn't been there, Pat. Uh, but no one else did. That's the point. Now that you're able to talk, Pat, tell me, what happened up there on deck? Well, Small and I noticed someone whom we took to be the man with the yellow face. Uh-huh. I immediately sent you that message asking you to come up on deck. Well, after the steward left with the message, Small and I walked aft along deck A when suddenly a figure slipped out of the shadows. He was honest before I could get set. Yeah. He knocked small to the deck, and then I grappled with him. Dick, I, I've never met anyone so powerful in all my life. I couldn't do a thing against him. He was so strong that he actually picked me up bodily and heaved me overboard. Hmm. I don't suppose you got a good look at him, Pat. No, Dick, I, I didn't. Everything happened so quickly. This man, Dryden Small, he knows why he's being hounded, Pat. He knows what the man with the yellow face is after. I'm convinced he also knows who the man with the yellow face is. Well, why don't we just wash our hands of the whole matter, Dick? Well, now you know we can't do that, Pat, even though I told Small I would. But there's something I can do. I can have this out with Dryden Small. So far, we've managed to protect him, but he can't go on this way. We've got to make that fellow realize that the closer we get to America, the more desperate our adversaries will become. Come on, we might as well have this out right now. Yeah, but the doctor said he was sleeping. I can't help that. I wonder who that is. Come in. Well, Captain, come in. I don't mean to disturb you, Mr. Tracy, but something terrible has happened. Well, what is it, Captain? The thing I've been dreading has come at last. You recall earlier this evening I spoke of one of the crew being found unconscious in the storage room. He was a man with a weak heart, I think. Yes, yes, I remember. He's the man who claimed to have seen a figure standing in the door of the storage room. Yes, well, he insisted on going on with his work in the storage room. He's had another shock, Tracy. One that may be fatal. Another heart attack? Yes. From what I know, I, I'm convinced he was scared into his present state. I see. Where's the victim now? He's still down in the storeroom. The doctor is giving him first aid, trying to revive him. Pat, you stay with Dryden Small. Yeah? I'm going down to that storage room with the captain. Those two things may be linked up. I don't know how, but they may be. Okay, Dick. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Here, uh, take my gun. You may need it since you lost yours overboard. All right, thanks. And don't let Small out of your sight. Oh, I won't. Come along, Captain. Right. What you say is true. We may have to make new plans at once to trap the man we're looking for. Well, Doctor? He's still in the deep coma, Captain. I haven't been able to do a thing for him. I'm afraid he must be taken to the ship's hospital. Oh, oh, very well, Doctor, very well. I've already sent for a stretcher. Splendid. Give him the best of care. I tell you, Tracy, it, it was something the man saw. Captain, may I suggest that your men make a thorough search of the hole at once, especially the storage room? I've already seen to that, Tracy. But you told me this evening about the strange apparition this man saw. It may certainly have something to do with this. Perhaps it was the man with the yellow face. By the way, what... What's that thing over there? You're there? <laughs> That's the mummy case Dryden Small is bringing back to America. I believe it contains the mummy of Tadonkamul's second son. Frankly, Tracy, I'd feel much happier if Tadonkamul never had a second son. Yes. A mummified passenger isn't altogether pleasant. Uh, what I'm worried about is the effect of all this on the crew, Tracy. They talk a great deal. Too much, perhaps. Rumors get around, you know. Before you know it, your ship has a bad name. I, 
I don't like it. I can well understand that. Ah, here comes the mate. Have you found anything? No, nothing, sir, not a thing. The men are still going over everything, though, just to be sure. Yeah, thank you. Well, Tracy, there doesn't seem to be much either of us can do here. Do you care to join me in my cabin? A little coffee, perhaps? Some sandwiches? Yes, I'll enjoy it very much. But I feel the most important place for me to be right now is back in Dryden Small's cabin. All right, I'll have the coffee sent there. Hey, Doug, sir. This way, Captain. Dryden Small's stateroom is down this way. Yes. You know, Tracy, it certainly is reassuring to have you on board this trip. I'd hate to have all these bizarre things happening without you here to help clear them up. Well, I haven't cleared them up, Captain. No, but I know your reputation. I have absolute confidence in you, Tracy. Well, thank you. This is really one of the most puzzling cases I've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I ever had so little of a tangible nature to work with. There's so many things I'd like to know. I'd give a great deal, for instance, to know what the Black Pearl of Osiris is and where it is. I'd like to know why the man with the yellow face is so anxious to get hold of it. To make it brief, Captain, I... <laughs> I'd like to know what it's all about. Mm, that is all that, eh? Well, I'll say this, Tracy. I'll be a very much relieved man when this ship docks at New York. I dare say. Well, here we are. Mm -hmm. ah, Pat must be in the bedroom. Yes, he... Uh... I have told you this wait a minute, wait a minute. Voice, to... strange voice. Listen. I have no desire to discuss this matter with you at any length. All I ask from you is that you tell me where the Black Pearl is. The Black Pearl of Osiris. I don't know, I tell you. I don't even know what you're talking about. Your friends, Iden Small, practiced the same deception. He, too, pretended ignorance of the Black Pearl of Osiris. You see what has happened to him. The same thing will happen to you. This pearl-handled revolver of his may not be very impressive looking, but I rather think if it is well aimed and uh, skillfully handled... It can be deadly, indeed. Now, listen, I'm telling you... You will I... tell me nothing but what I want to know. Where is the Black Pearl of Osiris? Answer, you white devil, or it will be the worst for you. Great heavens, Tracy. What, what's going on in there? It's evident the Pat's on the spot. I've never heard that voice before, but I'll bet it's the man with the yellow face. What can we do? Have you a gun? No, I haven't. Mm, neither have I. I gave mine to Pat. I can get one, though. No, there's no time. We've got to work quickly. You can't do anything against that man without a gun. Time grows short, my friend. Answer me quickly. I refuse to waste further words with you. Now listen, I'm telling you the truth. Why should I lie to you? I don't know where the black pearl you're talking about is. This little pearl-handled revolver is about to speak. I do not think you would care to hear its voice. Now I tell you, you've got me all wrong. I don't know any more about that black pearl than you do, or Tracy does. We try to get dry and small to tell us, but he wouldn't. Very well, my friend. I see you are not only stubborn, but reckless of your life. And so it Ready, becomes Captain. necessary anything, for me anything. to... What are you going to do? Pull a bluff, Captain. Pull a bluff. Kill you. And believe me, my friend, you could have avoided it if you had wanted to. However, you forced my hand. And so... Dick! Dick! Oh, you are. Drop that gun or I'll drop you. Who is the man with the yellow face? And will Tracy succeed in bluffing him? What is the mystery of the Black Pearl of Osiris? We'll soon know. But now the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, invite you to attend the meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. And here's Dick Tracy, Jr., your patrol president now. The 21st meeting will now come to order. And today I have another secret code message for you patrol members. So get your pencil and paper ready, fellows and girls. You know, one reason why we're sending you these secret messages every day is that Dick Tracy wants you to be able to use the code as easily and as quickly as he does. That's important. And that's why you should send at least one code message to every patrol member you know every day. That's the way to get good at it. And it's a lot of fun. But now get ready for today's secret message from Dick Tracy. Here it is. It's football, 10, 11, 7, 17, 11, 26, 17, 9, 12, 25, 5, 17, 6, 15, 11, 25, 13, 3, 26. Did you get it? 
Repeat it, Junior, to make sure. Okay. Here you are. It's football. Ten, eleven, seven, seventeen, eleven, twenty-six. Seventeen, nine, twelve, twenty-five. Five, seventeen, six, fifteen. Eleven, twenty-five, thirteen, three, twenty-six. And remember, fellows and girls, that's a real message from Dick Tracy to you. Follow those instructions because something very important is about to happen. And if you or any of your friends are missing all the fun we're having, tell them how to join the patrol right away. You know, you just mail two Quaker Puff Tweet or Quaker Puff Rice box tops or one of each with your name and address to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Then you're a full-fledged member. You get the secret code book, the Dick Tracy Pledge, and the patrol member's badge. And don't forget to form your own active Dick Tracy patrol. It tells you how to in the secret code book. And then you're a patrol leader, and Dick Tracy sends you the special patrol leader's badge to wear with your regular badge. And say, patrol members, have you been promoted to the rank of sergeant or lieutenant yet? It's a real honor to wear one of those officers' badges, you know. Look it up in your code book and start now to win your promotion. Show Dick Tracy the kind of stuff you're made of. There go the big guns to remind you that Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually shot from guns to give you lots of trigger-fast energy in two different delicious cereals that thousands enjoy every day. And if there isn't any puffed wheat or puffed rice in your pantry now, be sure to ask Mother to order some for you at the grocer's. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the two tempting, delicious, nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. Here are the big guns. That's the way they sound when puffed wheat and puffed rice are shot from guns in the Quaker plant. Remember that sound the next time you sit down to a big dish of crisp, crunchy puffed wheat or puffed rice for breakfast. You see, when the nourishing grains of wheat and rice are shot from the big guns, they're actually exploded to eight times their normal size. Each tiny, hard-to-digest food cell is unlocked, and that's why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are so specially easy to digest, why you get their trigger-fast food energy so quickly and easily. And remember, patrol members, if you want to be strong, healthy, and alert like Dick Tracy is, you need lots of that same kind of food energy. So join the thousands of happy puffed wheat and puffed rice fans who enjoy puffed wheat one day and puffed rice the next. That gives you a delightful taste variety that mother and dad enjoy too. So tell mother about those two swell flavors and ask her to get some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's for you. And be sure to have your pencil and paper ready for a secret code message from Dick Tracy. Aboard the liner Marvania, bound for America, Dick Tracy and Pat have been trying to protect a certain well-known Egyptologist named Dryden Small from an unknown enemy called the Man with the Yellow Face. Yesterday, we learned how one of the crew in the hold of the ship had been frightened by a strange apparition. Returning from the investigation, Dick overheard the Man with the Yellow Face threatening to kill Pat whom he had left with Dryden Small. Tracy had no gun with him, so he was forced to try to bluff the man with the yellow face into believing he did have one. Will he succeed? Whoever you are, drop that gun or I'll drop you. Ah, Mr. Tracy. Uh, come in, won't you? I've got you covered, so don't try anything. Put down that gun. Thank you. No. This little pearl handle revolver belongs to Dryden Small. A dangerous little toy, but rather attractive. So I prefer to keep it. Who are you? What's your name? I believe I have been called the man with a yellow face. Rather an unpleasant, distressing name. I don't like it. 
My real name, and I hope that you will use it henceforward, gentlemen, is Kumi Batik. Egyptian, huh? That is right. Dick, he wounded Dryden Small. He knifed him before I could get in here. I heard Small cry out. It was in self-defense. You see, Mr. Tracy, he was indiscreet enough to withhold something from me. Something I wanted very badly. The Black Pearl of Osiris. Ah, you know. You wounded Small because he wouldn't tell you where it was. What is the Black Pearl of Osiris? And why have you been following Small to get it? That gun you are holding in your pocket, if you actually are holding a gun there, Mr. Tracy, compels me to answer more or less. As I have said, my name is Humi Batik. I am the high priest of the cult of Osiris, a secret group dedicated to the worship of that ancient god. And what about the Black Pearl? Has it some religious significance? Uh, it has indeed. The Black Pearl is a very small pearl. But, as you know, black pearls are rare and therefore are of considerable value. Aside from its value in money, however, the black pearl of Osiris is priceless in our eyes, for it is really the heart of Osiris. How can a pearl black or white be anybody's heart? Oh, you interpret my remark too literally, Mr. Patton. Many, many hundreds of years ago, a statue of Osiris was molded from gold with eyes of diamonds. When it was erected, it was decided that the statue must have a heart and it must be something unusual, something worthy of that incredibly beautiful statue. Tutankhamal, the pharaoh of that time, had in his possession a small but perfect black pearl and he gave this to the temple to be used as the heart of Osiris. I'm beginning to understand. That statue wasn't by any chance placed in Tutankhamal's tomb when he died, was it? Mr. Tracy, I bow to you. Yes, the statue was placed there. For hundreds of years, it was safe. Then came this infidel and stole the Black Pearl. But we knew, we who have guarded it for centuries, we knew that the heart of Osiris had been taken and that it must be returned at all costs. I have found it necessary to employ force, a thing I detest. But in my heart... I know that Osiris will forgive me, for I did it for him. Well, that's Osiris, will Batik. But undoubtedly, you're aware of the fact that there is another law here on Earth which meets out its own justice. And so... No, no, no. Do not move toward me, I caution you. Believe me, I will gladly give myself over to you after I have returned the pearl. But I have not the black pearl. And until I do have it... You cannot have me. I'm afraid you're mistaken about that. Believe me, I sympathize with you, but... It is not your sympathy I want. It is the Black Pearl of Osiris. That is what I want, and that is what I will have. Put down that gun, Batik. You cannot frighten me. I am not sure whether you have a gun there in your pocket or not. But if you have, you had better begin firing it now, because... Look out, sir. He's aiming at the light. Guard that door, Captain. Right there. The door, Captain. Don't let him get out. Uh -oh. Oh. Dick, you're hurt. You're hurt. Don't move. Don't Out move. of my way, Captain. Oh, I heard. Oh. Oh. After him, for right, heaven's sake, right. don't let him get away. Oh. oh, my leg. I can't stand on it. Go after him. Don't let him get away. Yes, and by the Lord Harry Tracy, I'll have the whole crew out to look for him. Does that hurt, Mr. Tracy? A little, Doctor. Not much. Not much, huh? No. I admire your nerves, sir, but you can't tell me that you aren't experiencing intense pain. I've proved for bullets before. Well, you you have to get it out, don't you? Yes, but I'm not so sure that I can. That fire of yours ought to be x-rayed to find out the exact location of the bullet. The bullet must be a very small one to judge from the wound. Yeah, it was a very small revolver. A small pearl handle, one belonging to Dryden Small. Ah, yes, Mr. Small. I treated him for a few knife wounds an hour ago. He'll be laid up for a long time. Tracy, I don't like that man. He deserved everything he got. Ah, that hurt you, didn't it? No, no, it's all right. He's gone. Yeah. The crew are searching for Hobie Batik, are they, Pat? Yeah, every available man. They'll find him, too. I wonder. Clever, that Egyptian. They searched for him before and couldn't find him. That's all right. All right, Doctor. Pat, I'm afraid our Egyptian friend is clever enough to find a safe place to hide. I wish I could be out with a crew hunting for him. What about that black pearl, Dick? The Egyptians seem sure Dryden Small had it. Have you any idea where it might be? No, Pat, I haven't. I can't 
can't help thinking that if only I'd known about this before. Right and small, it told me the whole story. All this might have been avoided. After the men telling you that he stole the pearl of Osiris. Yeah. You always suspected him, didn't you? Well, I thought he was dishonest. Basis, but I didn't know anything definite. The Tracy. Yes, sir. I'm not going to probe for that bullet anymore. It's useless. Oh. You have to wait until we dock tomorrow, go to a doctor immediately, and have it x-rayed. Unfortunately, we have no facilities for x-ray on board. I see. All right, Doctor, I'll do that. Now, I'll bandage it up. I think you'll be able to get around. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks very much. No luck as yet, Captain? Oh, none, Tracy, none. My men are searching the boat, but there doesn't seem to be much chance of finding Mr. Batik. As you say, he's probably chosen the one place where we wouldn't think of looking. Yes. The one place where we wouldn't think of looking. I wonder what that might be. Uh, if I knew, I could save the crew a lot of trouble. But I can promise you this, Tracy. He won't get off the boat when we dock tomorrow without being caught. I'll see to that. Yes? I wonder, Captain. I wonder. I've been watching the passengers go down the gangplank, Dick. And so far, I haven't seen anyone resembling Batik. No, neither do I, Pat. But he's going to try to get off this boat. He's going to land. We have every gangplank guarded. Hey, Dick! Junior! Well, hello, man. I'm glad to see you. Oh, gosh, am I glad to see you, Dick. Oh, hello, Pat. Oh, thanks. Oh, Pat. That's <laughs> okay, kid. I know when Dick's around, no one else exists. <laughs> Tell me, Junior, how's the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol going? We got lots of members? Boy, I'll say we have. Hey, what are you looking for? Oh, um, a friend of ours, Junior. We thought he might be getting off the boat. Uh, some gangster, I'll bet. Wrong that time, youngster. See anyone, Pat? No, I just thought for a minute, but it isn't him. Say, who are you looking for, anyway? An Egyptian named Humi Batik. He's been hiding on boat. Wounded a man. He says he did it in self-defense. We've got to get him. Dick, are you limping? Well, he was shot, Junior. Shot by the Egyptian, huh? Yeah. Hey, Dick, is it bad? No, 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 it's all right, Junior. Oh, Captain. Hello there, Tracy. Any luck? No, not as yet. Well, I hope he hasn't got past this, but I don't see how he could. I've got men stationed all over the place. Homie Batik isn't hard to recognize with that yellow face of his. There are two things that puzzle me, Captain. Eh? Where is Homie Batik hiding, and where is the black pearl? I searched the small to track thoroughly and couldn't find it. Well, I'd give a good deal to know the answers to those questions by itself. Hey, Dick, isn't that a body they're bringing off now? Down by the hole there. No, no, that isn't a body, Junior. That's a mummy case containing a mummy which belonged to the guy who was wounded. A mummy? Oh, gosh. What would be the one place we'd never think of looking at? Uh, uh, what was that, Tracy? Captain, I may be crazy, but come on. Dick, where are you going? I'm going to down to have a look at that mummy. But, Dick, you don't actually think he'd be in there, do you? I don't know, Pat. The one place we haven't looked for him. The one place no one would think of looking for him. By heavens, Tracy, I believe you're right. We'll soon know. Here, you. Yeah? Put that mummy case down, will you? Oh, with pleasure. Boy, they sure built these things in the old days. Where's a ton? All right, boys, put it down. Okay, okay, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There we are. Well, I must say, Tracy, you set me off several. Got a hand it to you. I would never have thought of looking in that mummy case. Well, remember, we're not sure he's in there. He may not be, you know. Yeah, there's something to that. But I have a hunch, Pat. A hunch that he is. All right, boys, pry off that lid. Okay. okay. Draw your gun, Pat, and stand ready. All right, Dick. You may need it. Is Humi Batik concealed in the mummy case? And supposing he is, where is the black pearl? A big surprise awaits us, a surprise you won't want to miss for anything. And now stand by for a meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. Brought to you by the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Those two nourishing, tasty cereals that are shot from guns. Here's Dick Tracy Jr., your president, now. The meeting will now come to order. And today we have another secret code message for you from Dick Tracy. Have you got your pencil and paper ready to take it down? If not... Get them right now so you won't miss Dick's secret message. While you're getting your pencil and paper, I want to report a lot of new promotions to the ranks of sergeant and lieutenant. Congratulations, officers of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. And if you aren't an officer already, start to win your promotion right away. It tells you how in your secret code book. All right, Mr. Quaker Man. Here's the secret code message. You ready, everyone? It's prisoner 261016. 
three, twenty-one. Seventeen, sixteen, twenty, eight, sixteen, three. Eight, eighteen, fifteen, four. Twelve, twenty-one, fifteen, thirteen, nine, fourteen. That's a long one, Junior. I think you'd better repeat it. Okay. Here it is again. It's prisoner twenty six ten sixteen. Three twenty one. Seventeen sixteen twenty eight sixteen three. Eight eighteen fifteen four. Twelve twenty one fifteen thirteen. Nine, fourteen. That's real news for you from Dick Tracy Patrol members. Be sure you decode that message. It's important. And with all the big things that are happening, be sure there's some famous Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the pantry so you can get your box tops. Look today to be sure. And if there isn't any, ask Mother to get some at the grocer's. And then you and Mother and Dad can have puffed wheat one day and puffed rice the next for a delicious variety that really brightens up your breakfast. And don't forget those two swell cereals are shot from guns. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure next Monday at this same time. That is all. <laughs> fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. Once again, the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two nourishing, delicious cereals that are shot from guns, bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy adventure. those big guns? They're making puffed wheat and puffed rice, those two delicious cereals that are shot from guns right in the Quaker plant to give you nourishing wheat and rice in their most digestible form. The wholesome, sun-ripened grains are actually exploded to eight times their normal size, and that makes them especially easy to digest, so thousands of boys and girls and grown-ups the country over can get the trigger-fast food energy they need to be as alert and strong as Dick Tracy is, quickly and easily. And you get it in two swell breakfasts that taste even better than they look. And boy, they look good. Mother and Dad enjoy puffed wheat and puffed rice, too, because they're so different from ordinary cereals. The plump, crisp, nut-like grains of goodness fairly melt in your mouth. So join that great happy family of thousands of puffed wheat and puffed rice fans. Ask Mother to get you some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice from the grocer. In our last episode, we learned how Dryden Small, the Egyptologist whom Dick Tracy had been trying to protect, was seriously wounded by Humi Batik, the man with the yellow face. Batik claimed that Small had stolen from the cult of Osiris a black pearl said to be the heart of the god of Osiris. Tracy, who had been shot in the leg while Batik was escaping, is trying to solve two problems. Where is Humi Batik and where is the black pearl of Osiris? As we continue our story, we find ourselves at the pier where the SS Marvania has just docked. Tracy, Pat, and Junior have been watching the passengers disembark, trying to find Humi Batik, when suddenly... Well, I've got to hand it to you, Tracy. I would never have suspected that Humi Batik might be hiding in that mummy case. It would never have occurred to me. Well, we're not sure he's in there yet. He may not be, you know. Mm. Yeah, there's something to that. All right, boys, pry out that lid. Okay. okay. Throw your gun, Pat. Stand ready. You may need it. Right. Well, we were wrong. The man with the yellow face isn't here. That's a mummy, all right, Dick. Yes, yes, so it is. Stand back, Junior. Just to be sure, Pat, I think... I think I'll put a bullet in it. No, no, Tracy. In the name of those tears, I command you. Oh. Dick, 
It's not a mummy after all. It's Batik, the man with the yellow face. I recognize his voice. Yes, yes, and so do I. I rather suspected he'd be there. Unwind that sheet, boys. Come on, boys, come on. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Come on, come on inside. Take the wrappings off his feet. Yeah, they're off now, Mr. Tracy. Thanks. Well, Batik, have you anything to say? What can I say, Mr. Tracy? You, you have captured me. I bow to you, sir. You had your duty to do as you saw it, Batik. And I had mine. If I was to be caught, I'm glad it was by you, Mr. Tracy. At least you understand and respect my purpose. One thing only do I regret. I did not find the black pearl of Osiris before you caught me. Take him to the tombs, Pat. Where are you going? Down to headquarters at once to see Dr. Goldman and get this bullet probed out of my leg. It's beginning to hurt pretty badly. Well, that hurts, I know, Tracy, but I'll have it in a few moments. Go ahead, Dr. Goldman. I can stand it. Gosh, Dick, does it hurt that bad? You sure can take it. Well, it could take almost anything, Junior, if you make up your mind to it. One moment now, Tracy. Can't believe I've got the bullet. Ah, uh, there, there it is. Peculiar-looking thing. Smallest bullet I've ever seen. Yes, I've never seen one quite like it. Cooper, the ballistics expert, would be very much interested in this bullet. I'm very much interested myself. The ballistics department is right across the hall. Why don't you call Cooper in? I'd, I'd like him to take this bullet and examine it for markings. All right. Here, I'll put this temporary dressing on. Be back in a moment. That bullet came from Dryden Small's gun, didn't it, Dick? Yes, Junior. Peculiar little gun. Say, Dick, have you got any idea where the Black Pearl of Osiris can be? Not the slightest, Junior. But I've got to find it. You don't feel towards this batik fellow the way you do towards, well, towards criminals, do you, Dick? Well, he's wounded a man and must pay for it, Junior. He's a criminal, yes. But he, too, has certain rights. And I must do all in my power to recover for him and his people that which has been stolen from them. That black pearl is theirs. It's part of their religion. And I'm going to see that they get it back. Well, Tracy, I hear the doc has relieved you of a piece of lead. Didn't know you were going in for collecting them on your person. <laughs> uh, Cooper, come on in. Right. Yes, here it is. What do you think of it? Yeah. Queerest looking bullet I've ever seen. Like to add it to my collection, if you don't mind, Tracy. Not at all, Cooper. But I'd like to have a report on it first, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure thing. I'll analyze it this afternoon and give you my detailed findings by this evening. Thanks a lot, Cooper. Well, Doc, if you'll just bandage that leg up, I'll be getting down to the tombs. I want to have a talk with Homie Batik. Uh, Batik's in cell four, down this way, Mr. Tracy. Thank you. Come on, Junior. Yeah, right behind you, Dick. Hey, someone here to see you, Batik. I have no wish to see anyone. It's Tracy, Batik. Oh, Tracy, welcome. I am afraid I cannot offer you a great deal in the way of comfort. Oh, that's quite all right. Comfort's a small matter. I do not believe I have met the young man with you. Oh, this is Junior. How do you do? How do you do, sir? I am glad to see, Mr. Tracy, that your leg has not been seriously injured. I, I have worried about it. You see, I am not really a criminal. I detest force in any shape, but it was necessary. Well, fortunately, that pearl handle revolver belonging to Dryden Small was a toy and nothing more. Ah, yes, Small. How is he, Mr. Tracy? I have been worried about even him. He's in the hospital. He's been placed under arrest. Be removed to prison as soon as possible. And what of me, Mr. Tracy? Well, Batik, a board of inquiry is investigating your case now. Much as I understand your motives for what you did, despite the fact you say it was in self-defense, the machine of the law must take its course. I understand perfectly. I do not care what happens to me, so long as I know the Black Pearl of Osiris is safe. Have you... have you found it as yet? Not as yet. But since it was stolen from you, it's my duty to find it and return it if I can. The question is, once I've found the pearl, how can I return it to Egypt? I... I'm afraid you may not be in a position to take it yourself. (laughs) Quite right. Uh, However, there is a representative of the cult of Osiris here in America. He has been to visit me, and he is taking care of matters for me. Once the black pearl is found, he will carry it back to Egypt and to Osiris. I see. You know, Batik, for the life of me, I can't understand why Small stole that black pearl. It isn't valued that highly, in money at least. It has some monetary value, yes. But it has even a greater value to collectors of, uh, 
shall I say, curiosities? I see. Here in America, there is a group of men who make their living by stealing treasures. Treasures of art and other things, such as the black pearl. These men will stop at nothing to get that black pearl. And by the way, let me warn you against these treacherous forces if you should find the black pearl. From the moment you get the pearl in your possession, your life will be in danger. If these men are as powerful as you say they are, how did you intend to get the black pearl back to Egypt safely? And if I find the pearl, how will your friend hope to get it back safely? You see this ring on my finger, Mr. Tracy? Yes. Gee, that's a strange-looking ring. has a scarab on top of it. Yes. This is the luck ring of Osiris. The luck ring? Yes. Wherever I am, whatever trouble I may be in, I have but to rub this ring, and Osiris will do what is best for me. You just rub the ring and you have good luck, huh? Precisely, my young friend. Then you placed complete confidence in this ring. You felt that it would protect the Black Pearl until you reached Egypt. Yes, I have every confidence in it, as should all who own one like it. But it is more than a ring of good luck, Mr. Tracy. Look. Gee, the top comes off. There's a secret compartment in the ring, huh? Ah, yes, a secret compartment made to fit the Black Pearl. I intended to put the pearl in there seal the ring, and carry it back with me to Egypt in that manner. Hmm. Well, that would have been a very clever hiding place. Few people would suspect that that fascinating ring contained a secret compartment. Boy, I'd like to have a ring like that. I could carry secret messages in it and everything. After you find the pearl, you will have to keep it with you a few days. A friend of mine will come to you for it. And so, here is my ring. Take it. Keep it with you always. I... I can only say thank you, Batik. I will continue the search for the Black Pearl. And I have a feeling I'm going to find it. And it's my hope that in a short time you will be able to return once again to your own country, to Egypt, and to Osiris. That is most kind of you, Mr. Tracy. Excuse me, Mr. Tracy. Yes? There's a phone call for you, sir. Oh, I'll be right there. Well, Batik, I'll see you again soon. And thank you for the ring of Osiris. Remember the secret compartment. Remember also that wherever you are, whatever trouble you are in, you have a great friend in Osiris. A great friend worthy of great faith and capable of bringing you good luck at all times. Thanks again. Coming, Junior? Yeah, sure. Gee, that sure is a swell ring. Uh, this phone? Uh, yes, Mr. Tracy. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Tracy. Oh, hello, Cooper. What is it? Uh, Tracy, come down here to the Ballistics Bureau as fast as you can. But what is it? What's happened? Tracy, that bullet they took out of your leg is the most amazing bullet I've ever seen, in more ways than one. Uh, I can't talk on the phone, but for heaven's sake, get down here as fast as you can. What is Cooper of the Ballistics Bureau so excited about? Why does he want Dick Tracy to come down as fast as he can? Strange adventures await the great detective and his friends. But now it's time for the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol meeting. And the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those specially delicious nourishing cereals, invite you to attend. Here's Dick Tracy, Jr., your patrol president now. The meeting will now come to order. Say, wasn't that some ring that Homie Batik gave to Dick? Boy, it has lots of lucky symbols on it. And you should see the secret compartment in it. Dick will be always able to use that ring, won't he? You bet. He can carry secret messages in the hidden compartment. Boy, I wish I had a ring like that. Well, let's get in down to business now, Junior. <laughs> All right. You know, I almost forgot I'm so excited about that ring. But today, Dick Tracy sends his congratulations to all the patrol members who were promoted to the rank of sergeant this week. You know, Dick wants every boy and girl in the patrol to win promotion to the rank of sergeant. So if you haven't started to yet, look in your secret code book and see how you can be appointed a sergeant so you can wear the big special sergeant's badge, too. But let's not forget, Junior, that Dick Tracy wants every real red-blooded American boy and girl to join the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol first. So if you aren't a member now, join right away and show Dick Tracy that you're with him and for him. It's so easy. You just tear off the tops of two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or one of each. 
and then put them in an envelope with your name and address printed on a plain piece of paper and mail them to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Then you're a full-fledged member of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol, and you get your secret code book, your patrol pledge, and your member's badge, all free. So send your two Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice box tops to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago, fellas and girls. And remember, send the top of the package that says, Three Wrappings Guard It's Christmas. There's probably a package or two of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in the pantry right now. Look to see. But if there isn't, Mother will be glad to get some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's, so ask her to get you some. Tell Mother how Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them especially easy to digest so that you get their trigger-fast food energy more quickly and easily. Ask her to get some for you. Calling all adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at the same time. That is all. fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the two tempting, delicious, nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. Big guns. Hear them? Well, the next time you have a big dish of crisp, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice for breakfast, remember the sound of the big guns, because those two delicious cereals are actually shot from guns. Sun-ripened grains of nourishing wheat and rice are loaded into the guns, and then these little kernels of grain are exploded to eight times their normal size. That makes them look different and taste better than ordinary cereals. That special Quaker process makes puffed wheat and puffed rice specially easy to digest so that you get trigger-fast food energy more quickly and easily. And you need lots of quick food energy if you want to be as fast on your feet as your friend Dick Tracy is. And here's a good idea. Puffed wheat and puffed rice are two different delicious flavors. So ask Mother to get a package of each at the grocer's. And then you and Mother and Dad can have Quaker puffed wheat for breakfast one morning... And Quaker Puff Rice the next. That really gives you variety, doesn't it? So look in the pantry today to see if one of those famous red and blue packages is there now. If it's Quaker Puffed Wheat, ask Mother to get a package of Quaker Puffed Rice. And if it's Quaker Puffed Rice, ask her to get some Quaker Puffed Wheat. And then you have both for a delightful change that thousands of wide-awake boys, girls, and grown-ups enjoy every day. And remember, fellows and girls, there's another secret code message at the end of the program today. So be sure you have your pencil, paper, and code book ready. Dick Tracy has been trying to protect Dryden Small, a well-known Egyptologist from dark forces which seek his death. Small has received strange warnings, and several times his life has been attempted unsuccessfully due to the daring efforts of Dick Tracy. Both Dick and Pat are convinced that Small has kept from them the real reason for these mysterious attacks. In our last episode, we heard how a strange message, seemingly written by an invisible hand, had appeared on the wall above Small's bed. Let's see what the invisible hand is writing. Your hour's at hand. Your end is near. The black pearl of Osiris must shine again. Yes, yes, and look there on the floor. It's another scarab, Tracy, another scarab. Yes, so I see. Another symbol of death and destruction. Why don't you do something? <sighs> but it's no use. You can't fight the supernatural. They told me there was a curse upon the tomb of Tutankhamun. I should never have gone into it. 
All the others who have been in it have come to sudden death. Oh, stop it, stop it, Small. There's nothing supernatural here. I know, but Dick, the writing on the wall, we saw the message being written. Yes, sir. And now look, it's beginning to fade. Ghost writing, that's what it is. The handwriting of a ghost. Oh, come, come, Small. Pull yourself together. This isn't the work of a ghost. The man with a yellow face, whoever he may be, paid a visit to this cabin in our absence. How do you know he was here? Why, it's simple enough. The scarab on the floor, he left it there. The handwriting on the wall, he put it there. No, no, no. He might have put the scarab there, but the handwriting, that couldn't have been done by anybody human. We saw the message being written and there was no one here. Of course there wasn't. The message was written before we got here. We saw it when we turned on the bed lamp. I don't get it, Dick. Pat, put your hand over that lamp. About six inches away. All right. I've got it there now. What do you feel? Mm, nothing but heat. Ah, precisely. Heat. The heat from the lamp. Do you recall ever having used heat in connection with invisible messages before, Pat? Oh, why, sure. Say, I get it. This message was written in invisible ink and couldn't be seen until the heat of the lamp brought it out on the wall. Go to the head of the class, Pat. That's exactly what happened here. The man with a yellow face wrote his message in invisible ink. Small came in, turned on the lamp, and in half an hour or so, the heat from the lamp brought the message out. There's your supernatural for you, Mr. Small. You you make it sound simple. It is simple. If the rest of this case were as simple as that handwriting, we'd have no problem. But, but it's not simple, Small, because you choose to make it difficult. I choose to make it difficult? Yes. You refuse to tell us all you know about this. You refuse to tell us what we've got to know of where to protect you against the man with the yellow face. There's a definite reason why you're being followed. There's a definite reason for these attempts on your life, such as the one in the dining salon tonight. There's some reason for these scarabs and that message on the wall. Now, what is it? I'm sorry, but I don't know any more than I've told you. And I've told you once, and I'll tell you again, that you're not being entirely truthful. Now, look here. I want you to tell me the meaning of that message about the Black Pearl of Osiris. Yeah, that was a queer one. What is the Black per Pearl of Osiris anyway, Dick? I don't know about the Black Pearl, Pat. I do know, however, that Osiris was a god worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. And that even today, there are certain secret societies which still worship him. Hmm. Your knowledge of Egyptian history is remarkable, Tracy. Well, unfortunately, I don't know quite enough. But you know what I want to know, Small. What is the Black Pearl of Osiris? I demand an answer. I, I don't know, Tracy. I swear it. If I knew, don't you think I'd tell you? I, I, I feel rather faint. I, I wonder if one of you would mind going up on deck with me just for a little while. Well, uh, I, I had a date with a... All right, Pat, you'll have to forget your date. I've got to see the captain at once. You'll have to stay with Small. Keep close to him on deck and don't let him out of your sight. Okay. I hope I get a chance to explain to that girl that I didn't mean to disappoint her. You feel better now, Small? Yes, Yes, Mr. Patton, the air is doing me good. Looks like we're going to have a fog. You can see whispers of it floating past the binnacle light up there. Yes. You know, Small, you really ought to come clean with Tracy. Patton. Yeah? That, that man leaning against the rail. Well, he, he just looked this way, and his face... Well, what about his face? I, I'm not sure, but it, it looked yellow. It, it, it... Now, take it easy. Don't start getting jittery. Don't begin seeing a yellow face in every passenger on this ship. Look, look, he's moving away from the rail. He's disappearing into the fog. Oh, what, what was that? Something dropped at our feet. Yeah, I heard it. Let me see. Hey, hey here it is. What? Why, well, say, it looks it looks like a scarab. A scarab? A pattern. It, it's another warning. That was the man with the yellow face. Yeah, we'd better get down and get to your cabin. I'll get in touch with Tracy. No, 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 no. Not back to the cabin. I'm afraid to go there. Let's stay in the open. Okay, okay, but I better get Tracy here as quick as I can. Come on over by the light. What are you going to do? Well, Dick's in the captain's cabin. I'm going to send him a message. A message in code. Well, come in, Mr. Tracy. Glad to see you. How are you, Captain? Mm, worried, Tracy. Very much worried. I'm glad you're here. I don't like the things that have been happening on this ship of mine. Well, I'm sorry about the need for searching the ship, but you must understand, Captain, that at any moment, one of your passengers may be, well, put out of the way. Mm, that isn't what I referred to, Tracy. There are other things that are wrong. Such as? Well, have you heard about what's been going on down in the hold? The hold? Mm-hmm. 
I know. What's happened down there? One of the crew, a fellow named Weeks, was found about an hour ago, totally unconscious. Unconscious? Yes, lying in the door of the storage room. Not a strong fellow. As a matter of fact, he has a weak heart. That's why we have him down there. All he does is check the books and little odd jobs like that, you know. Yes, yes, but what made him unconscious? Well, according to his story, Tracy, as he was approaching the storage room, he noticed the door was open, which was unusual. As he began to investigate, he suddenly saw, standing in the doorway itself, a strange-looking figure. The next thing he remembers, he was lying on a cot. The ship's doctor was working over him. Huh. He's not given to seeing things, is he? No, I don't think so. He's a stable, dependable fellow. At any rate, he's never seen things before. Well, in that case, I don't think it'd be a bad idea to investigate that storage room. Now, about the search for the man with the yellow face, Captain. Yes, I wanted to talk to you about that, Tracy. We we don't seem to be making much progress. Matter of fact, Tracy, we're not making any progress at all. Yes, yes, I was afraid of that. Now, oh, excuse me. Come in. There's a message for Mr. Tracy, sir. Oh, give it here. Where did you get this? It was given to me by a gentleman down in Deck A, sir. Thank you. Excuse me, Captain. Yes, isn't he? It's a code message from Pat. Hmm? Prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16, 7, 10, 18, 22. Uh, will you excuse me, Captain? I've got to join Mr. Patton on deck immediately. Uh, nothing wrong, is there, Tracy? I don't know. That's what I want to find out. And I've got to find out fast. Well, I'll go along with you, Tracy. I've got to go up to the bridge, and this will be on my way. Glad to have your company, Captain, but let's hurry. can take this companionway here, Tracy. It leads down to deck A. Fine. Uh, here we are, deck A. I don't see Mr. Patton, do you? No, but this fog is getting thicker. Mm-hmm. He may be down at the other end. Come on. Well, I'll leave you here, Tracy. Man I... overboard! Man overboard! Yes. Man overboard, Tracy. Get down there as fast as you can. I'll see to watering the boats over the side. Right. Man overboard! Man overboard! Man overboard. Hey, hey, you there. Where is he? Oh, he's there. He's there. Man overboard! Man overboard! Man overboard! Oh. Small. What's happened here? The man with the yellow face. Patton's Yes, yes, what happened? Overboard. Patton, Patton was thrown overboard. What? Pat overboard? Wait, Tracy, what are you doing? Why are you taking off your coat? Why do you think? I'm going after Pat. Stop! Don't! Another man overboard! Another man! Another man. Tracy, they'll both be found! Patton and Tracy! Will Dick save Pat, or has the detective's friend been swallowed up by the black waters in the night? Dick will save him if anyone can. But now the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two popular, delicious, quick-energy-giving cereals that are shot from guns, invite you to attend another meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. Here comes Dick Tracy Jr. now. The 20th meeting will now come to order, patrol members. And let's be sure we all have pencils and paper ready to take down today's secret code message. Are you going to give Dick Tracy's friends the message that Pat sent Dick today, or have you a special secret patrol message, Junior? Oh, both, Mr. Quaker Man. First, I'm going to repeat the message that Pat sent to Dick Tracy. Good. Are you ready, patrol members? Here it is. Prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16. 7, 10, 18, 20... Two. Once more, Junior, to make sure everyone got it. All right, Mr. Quaker Man. It's prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16, 7, 10, 18, 20, 2. Fine. And now what's the special patrol message, Junior? Here it is. Are you all ready? It's Buffalo. 21, 12, 14, 10, 12, 4. 10, 20, 13, 3, 6, 10, 20, 13, 3, 21. 1, 8, 14, 5. Better repeat that one too, Junior, I think. Okay. Ready, everyone? It's Buffalo... 21, 12, 14, 10, 12, 4. 10, 20, 13, 3. 6, 10, 20, 
13, 3, 21. 1, 8, 14, 5. Well, that sounds very important, Junior. It is. It's a special order for patrol members. But how about the fellows and girls who aren't members and can't decode the messages? Well, we can't very well give away the patrol secret. Of course not. I can't imagine any real wide-awake boy or girl not joining, can you? Not unless they don't know how to join on the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. So maybe you better tell them, just in case there are some fellows and girls listening in for the first time. Good idea. Well, here's how you can join the patrol and get the secret code, the patrol pledge, and the membership badge so you don't miss any of the fun. Just tear the tops off two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or one of each. Put them in an envelope with your name and address printed on a plain piece of paper and mail them to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Then you get in on all the secret detective activities, too. And Dick Tracy sends you a secret code book, a patrol pledge, and a special badge, all free. Tell Mother how those nourishing, delicious cereals are shot from guns to make them specially easy to digest. So ask her to get you some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. Adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. Now the makers of nourishing, delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bring you the thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventures. There go the guns. That's the sound that means lots of delicious, nourishing breakfast for thousands of wide-awake boys and girls and grown-ups every day. That's the sound you hear when puffed wheat and puffed rice are shot from special guns in the Quaker plant to give you wheat and rice in their most digestible form. The grains are actually exploded to eight times their size. Each tiny, hard-to-digest food cell is unlocked, made specially easy to digest. And that's important, because the easier your food digests, the quicker you get the food energy you need to make you alert in thought and action like Dick Tracy. So tell Mother about that special Quaker process and ask her to get you some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. Dick Tracy, in search of a black pearl belonging to the Egyptian cult of Osiris, was given a ring containing a secret compartment by Umi Batik, a member of the cult. Batik, whom Tracy had captured, told him that if he found the black pearl, to conceal it in the ring. In our last episode, Dick received a call from Cooper of the Ballistics Bureau, who had been examining a bullet which the doctor had taken from Tracy's leg. It seems that the bullet was peculiar in more ways than one. Will Tracy find the black pearl of Osiris? And what has Cooper discovered about the bullet that makes it so interesting? Our scene, the Ballistics Bureau. Well, Cooper, what's all the excitement about? Uh, Tracy, I've been examining that bullet the doctor took from your leg. You mean the bullet that Homie Batik fired from Dryden Small's tiny revolver? Why, has Tracy had any other bullets fired into him? No, no. Go on, Cooper. All right. Well, at first I was chiefly interested in examining and photographing the markings on it. And then I decided to open it to examine the lead more carefully for weight and material, you know. Yes, just go on. That's the usual ballistic procedure. Yes, but this isn't what we usually find. I opened it. And here's what was inside. The Black Pearl of Osiris. Gosh! Then it is the Black Pearl, Tracy? Without a doubt. Well, this is the most amazing thing that's happened to me in a long time. You were carrying the Black Pearl around with you in that bullet and didn't know it. Yes. And now I understand why Dryden Small kept that pearl handle revolver near him at all times. Because one of the bullets contained the Black Pearl of Osiris. Well, there it is. Now, don't forget, you promised to let me keep the bullet for my collection. And that still goes. You can keep the bullet. All right. But I'll take the black pearl. 
I've got to see that this black pearl gets into the hands of the people it rightfully belongs to. You talk as if that's going to be a hard, hard job. It is, Cooper. Because there are others who also want to get this pearl. By this time, they know that Dryden Small is confined to the hospital, that the black pearl is in the hands of another person. It won't take them long to find out that I am that other person. And then I believe the fun will start. Well, what are you going to do with the thing? For the time being, until I contact the people it belongs to, I'm going to hold on to it. Watch. I take the top off this ring, and there you see a secret compartment into which I can place the black pearl. Gosh, Dick, I can't get over that ring. It's a beauty. Now then, I'll put the top on again, and there we are. The black pearl is now reasonably safe until I can put it into the hands of the proper person. That's a very attractive-looking ring, Tracy. I've never seen one like it before. It's more than just attractive. It's a mysterious ring given to Dick by Humi Batik. Batik claims it will bring good luck to you whenever you need it. Yes, yes. I wonder what adventures and troubles will follow in the wake of this black pearl now that I have got it. Well, what do you mean? Well, Cooper, there's a group of men who make their living stealing art treasures. And this black pearl is one of them. These men sell these treasures to wealthy but dishonest collectors. Dryden Small is one of their agents. They know by now that Small is temporarily out of the picture. Why, at this very moment, they're probably plotting just how to get it. Silence. The High Mogul will speak. Gentlemen of the society, we are met here this evening to discuss various matters the most important of which is regaining possession of the Black Pearl of Osiris. With Small in the hospital, how are we going to find the pearl? Are any of you aware of the method Small used for concealing the Black Pearl? I devised the method. Until now, it was my secret, mine and Dryden Small's. That Black Pearl, gentlemen, was molded into a special bullet and placed in a special pearl-handled revolver for safe concealment. And who has that revolver now? Dick Tracy. That means, then, we're going to have a hard time getting it. The pearl-handled revolver no longer interests us. You mean the bullet has been fired? Exactly. And the pearl has been found by the Police Ballistic Bureau. It is now in the possession of Dick Tracy. It is being carried in a special secret ring made for it, called the Ring of Osiris. A secret ring? We have two objectives now. One, the black pearl of Osiris. The other, the secret ring of Osiris. I would like to have it in my possession. And how are you going to get it, Mogul? Well, we number among us, as you know, a gentleman from Madagascar. Will you step forward, Remo? I am yours to command, High Mogul. Remo? You came to us with a reputation. You are supposed to be extremely expert with the silken cord. Is that not so? I am proud of my reputation. Well, you will need all your skill and knowledge for, let me warn you, Dick Tracy is no ordinary victim. He's a man of great physical strength and great mental resources. Perhaps he will prove too powerful and clever for you. No one escapes the silken cord of death. How will you go about your work, Remo? I shall bide my time. I shall hide in the rear of Tracy's car at such time when I know he will be alone in that car. But uh, how will you know this? I, I shall climb to Tracy's window. I shall keep close check upon Tracy from there. Listen to his conversation. Find out when he is going to use the car alone. And then, hi, Mogul. I shall conceal myself in the back seat. At the right moment, I will leap upon Dick Tracy. Then we can depend on you? Have no doubt of that. I have never failed. Once the silken cord has fallen, Tracy will be no more. Da di da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di di. Well, Dick, you're a great detective. And as a crooner, my oh my. I sing, my critical friend, not because I sing well, but because I feel well. <laughs> yep, I'm very happy tonight. Things seem to be breaking right. A little threat like the, the death hanging over your head doesn't mean a thing, does it? By this time, Pat, you want to know that threats may not mean a thing. Where's the large bath towel? Yeah. Oh, here it is. 
Besides, showing that you're scared of a threat doesn't happen to be my style. Oh, I can't help wishing this black pearl business is finished. You've got the thing in that ring there, haven't you? Yep, yeah, I have. A junior's eyes shine every time he talks to that ring. By the way, do you really believe this ring brings good luck to the wearer? Well, we'll soon know just how lucky it is. By the way, Dick, when is that friend of Batik's going to come for the pearl? I don't know, Pat. Well, how will you know when he does come? He'll use the secret password that Batik and I have arranged. If he doesn't know the password, well... Then you know he's one of that gang Batik warned you about? Exactly. You know, Pat, this gang that Batik has told me so much about... I'd like nothing better than to get my hands on them, round them up, finish them for good. Well, it's a trick you've done before, Dick, with Blackie Moran and the Baron. Neither Moran nor the Baron were pushovers. Well, neither is this mob. Don't make the mistake of underestimating them. Uh, is the car downstairs? Yeah. I drove it over because I got a date tonight. Hey, hold on. It was my night to use the car. Huh? You had it last night and the night before. Oh, but, Dick, I got a date. Oh, sorry, old man, but so have I, with Tess. I was supposed to have the car last night. I let you use it instead. Nope, I'm afraid I'll have to insist on having it tonight. Well, okay, Legree. You can have the chariot. You take so few nights off, anyway. I wouldn't be the pal I want to be if I said anything. See, I promised Tess I'd take her for a drive up the shore road tonight. Perhaps we'll stop off someplace and dance. Hmm. How long has it been since you were on a dance floor, Dick? Why? <laughs> I'll bet you're rusty and out of practice. Oh, I don't know about that. Wait a minute. What was that? What was what? I thought I heard something at the window. Oh? I'll have a look. Hmm. So sure I heard something. Guess I was mistaken. No, Pat. You weren't. Huh? Look there. Where? That flower pot here in the fire escape has been moved. I remember putting it over on this side. Well, maybe someone else moved it. No, I don't think so. Look, the wet spot where the water soaked through. Yeah? If that pot had been moved an hour or so ago, the water would have dried up. It's still wet. That pot was moved less than 15 minutes ago, Pat. Well, what does it mean, Dick? It means, Pat, that I've been spied on. You mean someone's been at this window watching us? And listening to everything we've said. It started. What started? The attempt to get the black pearl of Osiris away from me. How do you know that, Dick? Wait a minute. Hello? Oh, hello, Tess. Yes, yes, dear, I'll be right over. Yes, yes, the car's waiting downstairs. Won't take me more than 10 minutes. All right, dear. What? Yes, yes, I know I've been neglecting you, but... And it's nice if you understand. Yeah, yeah, it's a grand night for a drive. Right. Goodbye, dear. Now, listen, Dick, be careful, will you? Anything may happen... Don't worry, Pat. It'll be all right. But I am worried about you. Well, there's the chariot waiting for you. It's all yours, Dick. Sorry, I've got to deprive you of it, Pat. Can I drop you anywhere? Uh, no, I walk. It's not far from Irene's house. See you tomorrow, Dick. Take care of yourself, will you? I've always managed to. Good night, Pat. Night. Right. We know, but Tracy does not, that Remo lies concealed in the back of Tracy's car. While the detective drives to Tess Trueheart's home, will Remo succeed in his devilish scheme? Tracy is on the spot. Well, let's hope the secret ring of Osiris will really guard the pearl for Tracy, because he'll certainly need luck to escape this time. And now for our Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol meeting, which the makers of tasty, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice invite every active, alert boy and girl to attend. So stand by, because here's Dick Tracy, Jr. now. The meeting will now come to order. And today we have a special announcement for you from Dick Tracy. Yes. Dick has asked us to tell you, patrol members, that he has a big surprise for you. And he's going to tell you all about it on Friday. He won't even tell me now. Nor me. But if Dick has something up his sleeve for all the patrol members, you can be sure it's well worthwhile waiting a few days for. And that's another thing, fellas and girls. If you haven't joined the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol yet, do it right away, before Dick Tracy springs his big surprise. Yes, indeed. And listen, patrol members, if any of your friends haven't joined yet, tell them to join now, so they won't miss all the fun. Why don't you tell everyone how to join the patrol, Mr. Quaker Man, just in case some of the fellas and girls don't know. All right, Junior. Here's all you do, boys and girls. Just tear the tops off two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or one of each. 
Then mail the two box tops with your name and address printed on a plain piece of paper to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Remember the address. It's Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Right. And listen, patrol members, if I were you, I would start saving Quaker Puff Tweet and Quaker Puff Rice box tops right now. You'll be mighty glad you did when Dick Tracy tells us what his big surprise is. As soon as one of those famous red and blue packages of Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice is empty, tear off the top and save it. Be sure it's the top panel that says, Three Wrappings Guard It's Christmas. Look in the pantry today to see if there's some there now. If not, ask Mother to get you some Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice at the grocer's. Those two tasty, trigger-fast cereals are shot from guns, you know, to give you and thousands of other wide-awake boys and girls and grown-ups two of the most delicious, nourishing breakfasts you've ever enjoyed. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all... Calling all adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans, stand by, Dick Tracy is on the air. Now, the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two delicious, easy-to-digest cereals that are shot from guns, bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy adventure. Hear that? Well, that's what we mean when we say shot from guns. Nourishing grains of wheat and rice are actually loaded into special guns in the Quaker plant. And then the guns are fired and each grain is exploded to eight times its normal size. That's why puffed wheat and puffed rice look and taste so different from ordinary cereals. But that's not all. If you could look inside a grain of wheat before and after it's shot from the gun, you'd see how each tiny, hard-to-digest food cell is shattered so that all the goodness is unlocked. Then it's specially easy to digest, so that you get the trigger-fast food energy much more quickly and easily. And you need lots of that same kind of food energy to be as mentally and physically alert as Dick Tracy is. So join the thousands of happy boys and girls and grown-ups who enjoy a big dish of crisp, delicious puffed wheat or puffed rice every morning. Mother's glad, and so is Dad, to have your reminder of something that tastes so specially good. So look in the pantry... And if there isn't one of those famous red and blue packages there, ask Mother to get you some at the grocer's. The Black Pearl of Osiris, its theft is Dick Tracy's latest case, was found concealed in a bullet which had been fired into the leg of the great detective. Tracy now carries that pearl in his secret compartment ring, which was given to him by Humi Batik, a member of the Osiris cult. Yesterday, Remo, a member of the society trying to get the Black Pearl, lay hidden in the back seat of Tracy's car while he drove to Tess Trueheart's apartment. Will Remo succeed in his plan to overpower Dick Tracy? The great detective is just stopping outside the apartment house where Tess Trueheart lives. So, I up the emergency brake. It's a pretty bad hill. The car should roll. And... No, you don't. Uh, you're a quick Tracy, but I... Oh, uh... There. I surrender. You have me. Give me that cord. Ah, silken cord, huh? Who are you working for? I have nothing to say. Perhaps you haven't now, but you will later. Can you drive a car? Yes. Then get up here and drive this one to headquarters. Remember, I've got a gun on you, so no tricks. So we wouldn't talk, eh, Dick? No, Pat. I couldn't get a thing out of him. No sense trying any further, either. When a fellow like that makes up his mind not to talk, you can't get a thing out of him. What I don't understand yet, Dick, is how did you manage to catch him? I could see him coming, Pat. 
I reached down to pull the emergency brake, and as I leaned back, Remo came up behind me with a silken noose. I saw him in the glass mirror on the dashboard. Mm-hmm, that was lucky. Lucky? Huh. I think it was lucky. Only Batik would say it was the ring that did it. Yeah, most likely. Well, Pat, I'm afraid it's going to take more than luck to win out against the men who are trying to get their hands on this ring and the black pearl that it contains. Well, after tonight's experience, I can believe that all right. They were willing to kill you to get hold of it. This black pearl must be worth a small fortune. Hey, pardon me, Pat. Yes? There's a, a man to see you, sir. Who is he? What's he want? Well, he says he comes from Humi Batik. Ah, send him in. This must be the fellow we've been waiting for, Pat. Mm. The agent from Humi Batik who's to take the black pearl back to Egypt. Oh, come in, please. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. You know who I am. You're a member of the cult of Osiris, is that so? The cult of the scarab? Yes, that is true. But he tells me you have the black pearl. It is that I have come for. May I have it, please? I can't give you the black pearl just yet. Ah, uh, why is that? You have it in that ring on your finger, have you not? But it told you to keep it in that ring. When I'm protecting something, I do it in my own way, thank you. But you were given that ring for that purpose. Perhaps I believed it'd be safer elsewhere. The black pearl, it is here in your office. I can have it for you in a little while. If you'd care to come back, let's say tonight about six o'clock, I can have it for you then. You should have kept the pearl in the secret ring of Osiris. There is danger otherwise. If you'll return tonight at six o'clock, I'll be glad to turn the black pearl over to you at that time. Very well, Effendi. I shall return at six o'clock. And now, until that time, farewell. Dick, you didn't tell me you'd put the black pearl somewhere else. I thought you were carrying it in the ring. Yes, yes, and I am, Pat. The black pearl is in this ring on my finger now. I didn't say it wasn't there. I merely let him think so. But why didn't you give it to him? He said Batik had sent him. He was lying. Batik didn't send him. Lying? How do you know that, Dick? Because he failed to complete the password. You may remember I used the phrase, the cult of the scarab. He was supposed to answer, no, the cult of Osiris the Great. He didn't, Pat. And so I knew he was a fraud. Then why'd you let him get away? Why'd you hold him? Oh, we're not letting him get away. We're following him right now. I just wanted to give him time to get out of the office. Come on, Pat. Getting into that cab. Yeah, a taxi. Uh, where to, mister? Follow that cab up ahead. Keep it a safe distance. I don't want them to know we're following. Hey, wait a minute. I don't want to get mixed up in no kind of trouble. I'm Dick Tracy. My badge. Dick Tracy? Holy smoke. Okay, sir, anything you say. Not too close, driver. Stay as far behind as you can. Yes, sir, Mr. Tracy. Uh, traffic's pretty thick, Mr. Tracy. Well, don't lose that cab, whatever you do. No, she stopped up ahead for a red light. Traffic sure is heavy today. I can just see the top of her. Don't lose her. Hang on to her. Uh, don't worry, I won't lose her. Hey, that cab's pulling up to the curb. Hey, that's funny, Dick. What is? Well, this is the ritziest section of town. Yes, yes, I know. Stop here, driver. Okay. Look, Dick. The driver of that other cab is getting out and opening the door of the cab. He looks excited. Yes, yes, there's something wrong. Come on, Pat. Come on. Hey, wake up, will you, mister? Wake up. Hey, hey, come on, guy. Hey, hey wake what's up. wrong? What's wrong, driver? Gee, I don't know. This guy's out like a light. It's the guy who was in our office, Dick. Yes, yes, I know. Let me have a look at him, driver. Okay, okay. Yeah. He's dead, Pat. He's been shot. Dead? Are you sure, Dick? You mean to say the guy is dead? Gee, he was talking to me only a minute ago. What do you make of it, Dick? Billy confirms my belief, Pat, that we're not dealing with any ordinary gang. Someone very shrewd must be at the head of them. Shrewd enough to anticipate all eventualities. You mean he knew we might follow this guy? Apparently. He wasn't taking any chances. He realized the trick might not come off, and so he had this fellow watched. Those who were watching him realized we were following and managed to kill this man. Probably with an air rifle and that traffic jam we passed through not long ago. Hey, listen, buddy, I, I ain't gonna get in no trouble, am I? Nothing huh? to worry about, driver. You say this is the address he gave you? Yeah, this is the address, all right, there. Well, in that case, we're all right, Dick. This must be the headquarters of the gang. I doubt it, Pat. I doubt it very much. 
He probably gave the wrong address. We'll have a try at it anyway. I'll have every house in this block investigated by the special squad. But I doubt if anything will come of it. I doubt it very much. Ah, Mr. Tracy. Welcome. Welcome to my, uh, my very poor abode. Hello, Batik. Well, you won't be in this very poor abode long. The Board of Inquiry is working overtime on your case. You... you have been very kind, Mr. Tracy. The blessings of Osiris be upon you. Thank you, Batik. By the way, you might be interested to know that an agent of the society tried to get the pearl. Oh, the fiends. They will stop at nothing. I am so glad I gave you that ring. You are carrying the black pearl with you, of course? Yes, yes, it's right here in this ring. I would like to see it, if I may. Oh, certainly. I'll take the top of the ring off and... There. Oh, Sirius, be praised. How wonderful to have the black pearl in our possession once again. Oh, Mr. Tracy, how can I thank you? How can I put into words my gratitude? Don't bother, Batik. I'm only doing what I promised to do. Tell me... When will your agent call on me for the Black Pearl? Oh, very soon. He is busy on other matters at the moment. The way must be made clear for carrying the Black Pearl back to Egypt. When that has been done, he will come to you. Uh, also, he is engaged on another matter. A matter of great importance to the young man, Junior. Junior? It is obvious you think highly of that youngster. That you have the highest regard for him. Oh, that's true enough. I shall have a surprise for your young friend in a few days, I hope. I am sure he will be very pleased. <laughs> well, you can't tell me about it now, I suppose. Well, I uh, don't know. Don't. I think I can guess. Well, Batik, I must leave you now. Depend on it, the Black Pearl is safe in my keeping. And I shall guard it carefully. Farewell, my friend. And many thanks to you for all your time. <laughs> This is a swell place to eat, Dick. Are we going to have lobster tonight? Not for you, Junior. Huh? Lobster's just a trifle too hard on a young system like yours. Oh, listen, I'm not a kid anymore, Dick. Well, if you can't have lobster, Junior, Dick and I won't have it either, eh, Dick? Right. We'll have a couple of chops instead. By the way, Junior, Homie Batik told me he'd have a surprise for you in a few days. A surprise for me, Dick? Gee, I wonder what it can be. Well, I dare say you'll find out soon enough. He's a swell guy. I hope nothing happens to him, Dick. So do I. I'm going to make it my business to be in court when the trial comes up. I'm sure you'll be able to help, won't you, Dick? Well, nothing came for our search this afternoon, as you know, Dick. We went through every house in that block. Rather suspected you wouldn't find anything. I was sure that fellow had given the wrong address. Well, let's forget about the black pearl and everything else for the next hour and enjoy our dinner. Or can we forget? What do you mean, Dick? I mean we're being watched, Pat. Huh? Four different tables around us. Certain shady-looking gentry have not taken their eyes off us. Don't look up now. No, but, but, but what do you think we ought to do? Trying to formulate a plan. They're undoubtedly after the ring and the black pearl. We're surrounded, Pat. I can see that now. Well, we've got to do something, Dick. I'll say. Get ready for trouble, Pat. We're going to have plenty of it. We try to leave this restaurant. Surrounded by agents of the man who is trying to gain the black pearl for himself, Dick Tracy, Pat, and Junior are in a pretty bad spot. Will they escape? Well, let us hope so. But now it's time for our Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol meeting, which the members of Tempting, Tasty, Nourishing, Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice especially invite you to attend. All right, Junior, we're ready. The meeting will now come to order. Say, Junior... Has Dick Tracy told you what his big surprise is? No, Mr. Quaker Man. I've tried to guess, but Dick says no to everything I can think of. Same here, but I know it's something really swell from the way he talks about it. It's for all the patrol members, too. Boy, I can hardly wait. Well, you won't have to wait long, Junior. And we ought to be sure that every wide-awake boy and girl joins the patrol before Dick springs his big surprise on Friday. That's right. And you patrol members ought to make sure that all your friends join, too, so they don't miss all our fun. Good idea. And be sure to tell them how to join the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. You remember you send two Quaker Puff Tweet or Quaker Puff Rice box tops or one of each with your name and address to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Isn't that easy? Then Dick Tracy sends you the secret code book, the patrol pledge, and member's badge, all free. So if you aren't a member now, send your two Quaker Puff Tweet or Quaker Puff Rice box tops to Dick Tracy, 
Box L, Chicago, right away. Look to see if there's some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in the pantry right now. And as soon as your packages are empty, tear off the tops and save them for the big surprise Dick Tracy is planning for you. Remember, it's the top panel that says, Three Wrappings Guard Its Christmas. And that's right. Those famous red and blue packages are triple sealed to keep the tempting, nourishing grains of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp, plump, and fresh as can be for you. And if you don't see any Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in the pantry now, remind Mother to get some for you at the grocer's. Tell Mother how Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them especially easy to digest as well as especially good to eat. She's glad to have you tell her, and you'll be able to start saving your box tops for Dick Tracy's big surprise. Calling all adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. <laughs> fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by, Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, those delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy adventure. That's the way the big guns in the Quaker plant sound when they're making puffed wheat and puffed rice. Remember that the next time you sit down to a big dish of crisp, crunchy puffed wheat or puffed rice for breakfast. That special, careful Quaker process, plus the fact that puffed wheat and puffed rice are triple sealed in moisture-proof packages, keeps Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice firm, crisp, and plump for you. And that's why they taste so much better than ordinary cereals. Puffed wheat and puffed rice are especially easy to digest, too. Each grain of sun-ripened wheat or rice is actually exploded to eight times its normal size when it's shot from the guns. Each tiny food cell is unlocked so that you get all the trigger-fast food energy quickly and easily. It's the kind of energy that helps make you strong, healthy, and alert like Dick Tracy. So join the thousands of happy puffed wheat and puffed rice fans. And if there isn't one of those famous red and blue packages in the pantry now, be sure to remind Mother to ask the grocer for some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And remember, there'll be a secret code message today, so have your pencil and paper ready. The Black Pearl of Osiris, belonging to an Egyptian society dedicated to the worship of the ancient god Osiris, is desired by a band of thieves and murderers. Dick Tracy has concealed the pearl in the secret compartment of a mysterious ring given to him by Umi Batik of the cult of Osiris, who told Dick it would bring him good luck. In our last episode, we heard how Dick, Pat, and Junior, while dining in a restaurant, suddenly realized they were surrounded by henchmen of the murderous band. I've noticed, Pat, that we're being watched. Four different tables around us, certain shady-looking gentry have not taken their eyes off us. Don't look up now. No, I won't. What do you think we ought to do? Well, I'm trying to formulate a plan. We're undoubtedly after the ring and the black pearl. Yes, yes, we're surrounded, Pat. I can see that now. We've got to do something, Dick. I'll say Get ready for trouble. We're going to have plenty of them. We try to leave this restaurant. Go on with your dinner, both of you. Pay no attention. Okay. Change you haven't noticed a thing. What? This dinner's got to end sometime, Dick. Yes, I know, Junior. By that time, let's hope we'll dig up an idea that will get us out of here safely. Ah, that was good coffee. Finished, Pat? Yeah, I'm finished. I'll tell you one thing, though. I certainly didn't enjoy my dinner the way you evidently did. I didn't get much fun out of this food, either. Gosh, Dick, I don't know how you do it. We're surrounded on all sides by the, these men, and 
You calmly eat your dinner. And enjoys it, too. Well, why not? Nothing could have happened until we were finished, ready to go. Look, Dick. Five or six of those guys are going outside. Yeah. Yeah, they see we're through with dinner, and they will be going out any moment. Well, shall we go? Into the hands of that welcoming committee out there? Uh, could we have some more coffee? I really feel like having another cup. Not bad. It'll keep you awake tonight. Unless I'm mistaken, you'll have plenty to perk you up in a few minutes. Gee, Dick, aren't you worried at all? Well, I'm trying not to be. If you try hard enough, you know. Here, I'll take the checks. Come along. Cashier's down this way. Two twenty-five out of five. Here's your change, sir. Thank you. Hey, look. Those guys at the other tables are following us out. Sort of nonchalantly. Not a very good way of showing nonchalance, is it? Just have your gun ready. Junior, I've taught you how to stay out of harm's way if anything happens. See that you do it. No, no, not me. I'm going to stick to you, Dick. You'll do as I say. All right, now. There's the door to the street. Let's get going. Well, there's the car. Yeah, and a couple of fellows leaning against the fenders. Come on. Uh, just a minute, buddy. Just a minute. Is this your car? Yes. Do you mind? Maybe you don't know it, buddy, but this is my private parking place, see? I usually park me car here. Well, that's very interesting. Step aside, please. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Hey, what's the matter, Joe? With this guy getting tough? Yeah. Looking for a paste in the jaw. So happens I wasn't looking for anything. However, I see that you very possibly are, and so... Oh, hey, you can't oh. do that well. Oh. Get, get in, Pat. Junior, quick. Come on. Uh, get him, boys. Get him. Here they come, Dick. Uh. Hey, let him have it, Pat. Oh. Keep behind me, Junior. Oh. That's the old for the ring. The ring did him. Oh. They're trying to get the ring. Keep slugging and stop talking. Get him. Get him, you guys. Yeah. The cops, they're coming, Dick. Yeah. Swim kind of wild, aren't you, big fella? Here's the way to do it. Oh. Run, you guys. Run, it's the cops. Jesus. They're running away, Dick. So I see. Well, they're taking a few of our souvenirs on their jaws. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. what's been going on here? Street fights, eh? Well, we'll see. Hello, soon... hello, Donovan. Lovely evening, isn't it? Tracy, well, what the it's devil all right, is Donovan, you? it's all right. Uh, the boys are chasing those rascals. They'll bring them in all right. Good. <laughs> Meantime, I've got all of someone's coat. I grabbed one of those yeggs by the collar and he... Slipped out of the coat, leaving it in my hands. I wish we had gotten a fellow in the coat. Perhaps we will, Pat. Oh, Dick. Oh, great Scott, Dick. What's the matter? Your finger. Look. The ring. The secret ring of Osiris. It's gone. Gosh. Gee, then so was the black pearl. Oh, they got it. They got it after oh, all. Oh, no, no, no. They didn't get it, Pat. Because you see, you have it. I have it. Now, listen, Dick. This is no time for gags. Get in your pocket. The right-hand pocket. Huh? Let me see. Well, well, I'll be a cross-eyed owl. It is the ring. How to get in my pocket? I put it there. I slipped it off and put it in your side pocket. I knew they'd try to get the ring. They were sure I was wearing it. I didn't think they'd suspect you. Yeah, that certainly was fooling them, all right, Dick. Two of them made for the hand that was supposed to be wearing the ring. I'm uh, afraid they were a little disappointed when it folded into a fist. Yeah, I'll bet they were, Dick. If only we knew where we could get our hands on that gang. If we had some idea of their hideout. We do have, Pat. Or rather, we will. What do you mean? We've got the clue we've been looking for. And now, once again, we can take the offensive. I much prefer it as a fighting move to watching and having to be on the defensive. What is the clue you're talking about, Dick? This coat, Pat. The coat I took away from one of those gangsters. Well, I don't get it. How can a coat help us find the gangster's hideout? Well, of course, I'm not sure it will, but I'm going to have a try. Come on, let's get down to my private laboratory at headquarters. Why your private laboratory? There are certain things there I need, Pat, including a vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner? Hey, as I said before... I know, I know. You don't get it, but you will. Say, Dick, what's the point of going over that coat with a hand vacuum? Yeah, come on, let us in on it, will you, Dick? Why all the little piles of dirt you put on the table? Why don't you put them all in one big pile? Well, you see, Pat, each one of those piles of dirt is labeled. Now, this pile here came from the right-hand pocket of the coat. Yeah? This one came from the left-hand pocket. This pile here is the dust I took out of the back of the coat. And when I empty this dust bag, this little pile will be the dust from the sleeves. All of which adds up to what? Well, Pat... You know that there's more to being a detective than hand-to-hand -hand encounters with criminals. There are times when the fight against crime is carried on not by guns and forces, but science and skill. Some of the most brilliant wars against crime are fought and won in scientific laboratories. Now, I said that this code would lead us to the gang's hideout. And it's going to do just that. And yeah, I'll see. Um, hand me that microscope, will you, Junior? Sure, I will. Here you are, Dick. Thanks. Now we'll examine each of these little piles separately. Yeah. 
Have a look, Patrick. Okay. Well, what do you see? Well, you got me. All I see are some particles of black stuff that look like hair. And some gray dust that gleams a little bit. And some more gray stuff that seems sort of dull. And some colored particles of... Well, well it might be cloth. Is that all, Pat? Yeah, I think so. What else is there to see? Yeah, let me have a look, Pat. <laughs> well, Pat, you'll have to learn to identify things like that at first glance. Took me several years of study, but it was worth it. Tracing the origin of these little particles, being able to build up the story they have to tell is is indispensable to a detective. Now, let me demonstrate. Go ahead, I'm waiting. Those black particles that look like hair, Pat, they're really horse hair. I'll test them later, but I'm sure of it without testing them. All right, horse hair. So what? Those gray particles that gleam in the light, they're particles of emery dust from machines, Pat. Machines. Horse hair and emery dust. Come on. Now, these gray particles that don't gleam are particles of felt. Gray felt. Gray felt. I'm still listening. And those other little pieces of dust, the colored pieces, are particles of very colored cloth. You see, Pat, your clothes pick up and retain the dust that is in the air about you. Examine the clothes of a man who works, let's say, for a coal company. And his clothes will contain coal dust. A man who works in a coffee factory will have particles of coffee beans in his pockets and in the dust of his coat. And so on. Okay, but where does all this get us? Well, Pat, don't you see? We've... We've taken from this coat particles of horse hair, emery dust, felt, and colored cloth. Now all we've got to do is to decide what industry uses these articles. In other words, what's made out of them. Put them all together and they spell zero for me. <laughs> well, as I figured out, Pat, the one product in which these particles will be found exclusively, including the horse hair, will be mattresses. Mattresses, eh? Oh, say, that's right. I should have thought of that. Now what? Where do we go from here? Well, don't you get it, Pat? All this means is that the gang we're after probably has its hideout in or near a mattress factory. Well, I'll be done. Say, Dick, that's amazing. And a lucky thing it was that you got that coat. Well, don't let's get too excited about this. We may not be right. We've got to find out how many mattress factories there are in this town. And we've got to check every one of them. But it's getting pretty late, Tracy. How long do you intend to stay at headquarters and keep these men here? We'll have to wait until I hear from Pat. We discover that there are only three mattress factories in town. There are three squads out now. Pat's in charge of the squad on Clay Street, and he's going to report back to me the moment he gets what we're looking for. And what are you looking for? Proof that one of those factories is being used as a hideout by the gang we're after. Factories are being watched very closely. They're supposed to be shut at this time of night. If the boys see anyone prowling near one of them, entering the building, they'll know that that's the one we want. Uh, well, Pat, telephone? Yes. I told him to use the code. We're taking no chances on a slip-up. Uh, swell idea. Well, Tracy, I hope you're right about this mattress factory business. I know you're a bug on scientific detection and all that, and you've always been right in the past, We'll but... just have to wait and see. Mm. Ah. Yes? Pat, speaking. Go ahead, Pat. Buffalo. 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4, and hurry. Right. Let's see that code book. Hmm. Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 20. Wait a minute, that's the end of that word. Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4. Ah. Just what I've been waiting for. All right, men. Let's get going. Is Dick Tracy on the right trail at last? Will he bring the thieves to justice? And what was the code message that Pat sent over the phone? Well, you'll know in a minute because it's time for our Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol meeting brought to you by the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Those two specially delicious, specially nourishing cereals that are shot from guns. Okay, Junior. The meeting will now come to order. So get your pencil and paper ready, patrol member, because Junior is going to repeat the secret code message that Pat sent Dick Tracy today. Are you all ready? Here's the message. It's Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4. Better repeat it, Junior, so all the patrol members are sure to get it. Okay, Mr. Quaker Man. Are you ready, members? It's Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4. Now, when you decode that secret message, you'll know where Dick Tracy is headed on the trail of the high Mogul. And here's some extra good news, patrol members. 
Dick Tracy is going to tell us all about that big surprise tomorrow. Isn't that great? So be sure you're listening in, patrol members. Believe me, it's something you just wouldn't miss for anything. Do you know what it is, Mr. Quaker Man? Yes, Junior, but I promised Dick I wouldn't tell a soul. Ah, uh, come on, you can tell me. Ah, uh, no, Junior, you'll have to wait till tomorrow, too. All I can say is, start saving Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice box tops right now. Because you'll certainly wish you had when Dick Tracy tells you what that big surprise is. Boy, I can hardly wait. And here's another thing, boys and girls. Every box top you save also means a lot of delicious, quick-energy breakfast for you and mother and dad. So have Quaker Puff Wheat one day and Quaker Puff Rice the next. The way thousands of boys and girls and grown-ups do. And that gives you a grand taste variety because there are two different delicious flavors of the famous cereals that are shot from guns. <laughs> There go the big guns now to remind you to have your delicious, nourishing puffed wheat and puffed rice breakfast regularly so that you get lots of that same kind of trigger-fast food energy that keeps Dick Tracy so alert. So look in the pantry to make sure there's some there. And if there isn't, ask Mother to get some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. And be sure to save the box top. <laughs> Adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. Yeah.